It's six o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, police block Leon Briggs' plaque at Luton Police Station. Man charged with St Albans' murder and vital win for Milton Keynes Dons. BBC Three Counties Radio. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. It was due to be unveiled outside Luton Police Station tonight. More from Matt Lockwood. Leon Briggs died in November 2013 after being detained under the Mental Health Act. This This plaque was designed to replace a large floral memorial placed outside the station. His family say they've worked with the police over the wording and now feel badly let down. Bedfordshire police say they've postponed the plaque going up whilst they seek legal advice on the implications it may have for any future proceedings. Six officers are suspended while the Independent Police Complaints Commission investigation continues. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. Emile died in hospital after an incident in the city centre in the early hours of Saturday, October the 24th. 26-year-old Paul Crosby from Camden is due at Hatfield Remand Court. Ten other people arrested in connection with the inquiry remain on police bail. A convicted rapist has been detained by police after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. 58-year-old Malcolm Millman went missing during a visit to a monastery near Hemel Hempstead on October the 24th. Thames Valley Police say he was detained in Blackpool at around 8.30 last night under the Mental Health Act. Millman was convicted in 1996 after violent attacks on young women and was under the care of Chadwick Lodge in Eaglestone. Internet firms will have to store details of people's online activity for 12 months under the government's new surveillance law to be published later today. Ministers are promising strict safeguards, which it's thought will include judges authorising the most intrusive surveillance. MPs will debate police funding today with one of the most senior police chiefs in the country saying she's worried about the future of Bedfordshire Police. Bed's Police Commissioner Ollie Martins says he would welcome sponsorship of uniforms and police cars to help boost finances. The force is also said to be considering using speed cameras to enforce the 70 miles per hour speed limit on the M1 to raise revenue. The head of the National Police Chiefs Council and former Chief Constable of Thames Valley, Sarah Thornton, says the situation is worrying. Has somebody in the Home Office or the Inspectorate really look carefully at the maths on this to make sure these forces are viable? Now, I'm not sure they've done it for all forces, so mm. places like Bedfordshire, I am very concerned about Thank- The Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, is claiming that three-quarters of junior doctors will be better off under a new contract. He says there will be an 11% increase in basic pay, although there will be cuts to extra payments for working on social hours. In sport, a much-needed win for Milton Keynes-Dons last night in the Championship. Grunners inside the area. Bonic is there. Bonic makes it 1-0 to MK Dons. Great move from the home side. It was Carruthers and Bonic who combined. And MK Dons have taken the lead at home. Milton Keynes-Dons won. Charlton nil. The weather, cloudy and wet this morning, some sunny intervals later this afternoon, a maximum temperature 13 degrees Celsius, and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties.
across beds, hearts and bugs. This is Edward Adu on BBC Three Counties Radio. There's a sudden ending. It's, it's supposed to. Uh... Oh no, we can work with that. We can work with that. No, we can't work with that. Oh. Yeah, sudden ending. I knew there was oh. a sudden. I, I remember because I heard it in the car, and then it segued into. Um, then it segued into Cat Stevens on my um, uh, iPod. Crumbs. I've, so, I've somehow, and I don't know how, and I love it. I've managed to set my iPod so there's no gap between song. Gosh, that takes a lot of skill. It, well, I don't know how it's worked, but it's brilliant. So I've got lots of live concerts. So you'll have like the Beach Boys singing, uh, singing Surfing USA, mm. and then they go, all right, and then we're going to slow it down with a ballad, and then it cuts into, oh, I don't know, Lordy singing Hallelujah Rock and Roll or whatever their song was that they did for the... Um... And without my computer today, normally got my computer, as you know, I've been having a nightmare, and it really is. I mean, I can't think of a situation worse than this. Mm. Um <clears throat> Trying to update my iTunes and put put all my music in one place. Well, it completely balls it up. So I've had to reset it. And at six o'clock last night, I started uploading my 36,000 songs onto my iTunes again. At four o'clock this morning, I woke up. It was about halfway through it. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Never mind. We've put them in manually. <laughs> and um, we started with um, Jason Donovan because it popped up on my iPod. And I felt ashamed, but also elated to hear it. And I thought, I'm going to come in and I'm going to ask Kath to put that in the... In the show, and I felt embarrassed to say it, mm. but today, today, dear listener, oh three four five nine four double five five double five. No shame around music. The only band you should feel shame around liking is Coldplay. They're flipping awful. Um, but uh, although in ten years' time you will unveil the fact that you love them and you're not ashamed anymore, and you're going to say it, I'll be buying the X and Y expanded edition. Uh, See, I, I really misjudge these guys. They, they were really great with their boring um, uh, old man rock. Uh, no shame. If you've got any songs in your record collection that you feel ashamed of, today is the day to out them. Dealey's out on the street with it, or you can give us a call, 03459 four double five five double five. Now, supporters of Leon Briggs say they feel badly let down by Bedfordshire police after being told they can't put up a memorial outside the police station where he died. The brass plaque was due to be unveil- unveiled in Luton uh, tonight to mark the second anniversary of his death in custody. Um, Catherine, the family been pushing this for some time, haven't they? Yes, immediately after Leon Briggs' death, a memorial was placed outside Luton Police Station. That was back in November 2013. But earlier this year, it was removed by Bedfordshire Police, who believed it posed a security risk. Now, the family of Leon Briggs were angry with that decision, but they agreed to the removal on the basis that a plaque would be put up in his memory instead. Now, last month, the family showed the police what they'd come up with at a meeting. Officers asked for some amendments, which the family cooperated with, and they agreed to remove the following words. They, they put, no justice, no peace, and J4 
4L, Justice for Leon, from the plaque. So it means that all that it will read is RIP Leon Briggs, 4th of November 2013. Now, at the end of that meeting, the family were told it could be temporarily installed at Luton Police Station today on the second anniversary of so Leon's death. So what has changed? Well, Liberty Louise, who we'll be speaking to in about an hour's time, she's from the Justice for Leon group and says that this week they got a call from Bedfordshire Police saying that a legal issue had been brought to their attention and it couldn't go up as planned. The family see this as a betrayal as they fully cooperated with the police about the plaque from the start. They said they'd done what the police asked them to. But a ceremony to mark two years of um, since Leon's death will go ahead tonight as planned with or without the plaque. Um, what more have the police said? Well, in a statement, the Assistant Chief Constable Mark Collins said, we've been speaking to Mr Briggs's family and had initially agreed for them to place a plaque in his memory outside Luton Police Station. However, a legal issue has been brought to our attention around the placing of the plaque and any potential prejudice it could bring to any future legal proceedings. It's only right we consider these issues, however, with the anniversary of Mr Briggs' death uh, this week. The timing is regrettable and I would apologise to the family and friends for any upset this has caused. I would stress, though, that we're not ruling out the placing of a plaque at a future Date. However, it's in the best interest of all parties concerned that a potential legal implications are fully explored before it's agreed. Uh, the uh, IPCC investigation into Leon's death, where are we with that? Th- this is the thing. Five police officers and a police <coughs> detention officer are still under criminal and gross misconduct investigation. The final investigation report is in the process of being written. There is a huge amount of frustration at the length of time it's taken the IPCC to complete this investigation. On both sides, it has to be said. Yeah. Uh, we spoke to Ollie Martins about this too, and he wants it to, to, to you know, he wants some sort of result from, from the IPCC as soon as possible. And in a recent letter to Luton MPs Gavin Shuker and Kelvin Hopkins, Hopkins, the Commissioner Mary Canine um, from the IPCC acknowledged the concern the delay had caused to the uh, Leon Briggs's family. She apologised to them, to Bedfordshire Police and to the Council, but said it was a complex investigation and some of the delays are beyond their control. This is Ian Lee. Dig into the papers, Three Counties <coughs> Radio. The papers, the papers have only got here about ten minutes ago, so I'm, we're kind of um, um, we're kind of uh, digging in. We, we, do, we don't need to find anything for now, but just you know, have a little route around, see what you can find. Oh. I want to talk about scams as well. I was involved. I got got sucked into a scam. I get sucked into it about every year. I get sucked into a scam. Oh really? Yeah, a scam, and I pay top dollar for it. You're trying to get rich quick. Every flipping year, I normally I go to the dentist every six months. I haven't been for two years. I've got no fillings. Got no teeth. I've got teeth. Um, and I went in, of course. You know what they said to me? I went in about three weeks ago. You know what they said? I've got to go to the hygienist. Mm. Got to go to the hygienist. No, you don't have to go to the hygienist. It used to be that the dentist had scrape your teeth for you. Well, now, so now you've got to pay, I don't know what it is, I think it's like 45 quid to go to the hygienist. And then, and so I went to the hygienist and it was like, it was, oh, it was like um, the St. Valentine's Day massacre. Mm. Oh, it was, I mean, it was blood everywhere. The scrapings, the gunk, the cack, the blood... The disgusting detritus that she scraped out from between my gums and my teeth was everywhere. Then at the end, and I, and I went, oh, I'm going out. It does feel different though, doesn't it, on the back of your teeth? Oh, it feels brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I've still got that. Um, I've still got that horrible taste in my mouth. Mm. I've got a horrible taste in my mouth for the past three weeks. I've tried all kinds of stuff. I've tried um, uh, Corsodil mouthwash. I've tried this this cream that you're supposed to rub in to get mm. rid of all like fungus and stuff like that. I've got fungus in my mouth. Have you? I don't know, I'll make it up, I have. Can't get rid of it. Um, Is I, it dehydration? Are you drinking too much coffee or something? I think you might be drinking too much coffee. Mm. So, the, uh, the, the, the hygienist is one of the biggest scams of all time. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let, let, let's get to the travel, because I've got, I've got more of a rant coming. Travel news for beds, hearts and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1, it's slow southbound between Junction 12 for Flittick and 11 for Dunstable, and it's also busy um, on the... North Circular Road westbound in Neeson, approaching the Neeson interchange from the M1 at Staples Corner, and that's because of the roadworks. In East Hyde on London Road, there's temporary traffic lights at the junction for Newlands Road, so that could cause some delays when it starts to get busier, but it's looking quiet there so far this morning, but the roads are all looking very wet on the CCTV, so that could affect visibility and driving conditions this morning. On the train departure boards, the 625 service from uh, Stevenage to London King's Cross has been cancelled. Samantha Bruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy, thank you very much. Indeed. 6.16, uh, Wednesday the 4th of November. Remember, remember, the 4th of November. These are your headlines. Oh, okay, I, try, I was trying to do a little... Um, what was it? It's 5th of November. We've got till tomorrow. We're a day early. We're a day early, guys. 
Bedfordshire Police has blocked up putting a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month and a convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. Nick Coffer on BBC Three Counties Radio. History coming up uh, very shortly with the uh, brilliant Dan Hill. He's a local historian. Sorbetsworth, um, amongst other things, has got quite a rich history. As it's further east, there is uh, a lot more influence with regards to things like air raids. Weekdays from 12. Great music as well coming up here on BBC Three Counties Radio. Freddie Mercury, the great pretender. Go west as well on its way. First though, his T-Rex. Nick Coffer. You know, it's fantastic to be able to get, you know, people like Nathan Bell and Gary Matthew and, you know, experienced but still early on in their careers, giving them the opportunity to come and make music in a lovely environment, Luton Library Theatre. Could you describe modern Britain in 50 records? Stuart McConey is doing just that in his book. I don't think you're ever going to know the Beatles that are going to dominate the pop cultures. Nick Coffer, weekdays from 12 on BBC Three Counties Radio. Who needs McConey when you've got Lee? Yeah? Huh? Just 30 teeth inside of our heads These are the limits to our experience It's scary, but it's alright And everything is finite Only one record in this whole wide world Where Jimi Hendrix sings husband and dad Another Elvis will not come along, he got wasted, but it's alright, and everything is fine, yeah, wasted, it's alright, everything is fine, Just a baby in my daddy's arms Who will protect me from these women's charms I'm six foot tall but I can barely speak My mind goes crazy when the taste is sweet While well, we've known each other eight years and twenty days It's terrifying, it's beautiful too Things have an end but it would change in, but it's all right. Everything is fine. Yeah, change it's all right. Things are fine. Have some of that. Have me some of that. Uh, oh three four five nine. Four double five five double five. Dealey! Good morning, Giza. We're trying to get rid of this morning the shame mm. that we are, we have around some music. And we started off with Jason yep. Donovan. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a cracking song. I'll be oh. honest, the, the production's a little bit limp. I, what I would love, yep. and they've got the technology to do this now, mm. what I'd love is if they, um, uh, the, the, the Stock Aitken and indeed the Waterman uh, made yep. up, went back in the studio, stripped off the backing track so you just got the vocal. <sighs> Oh, yes. They've yes, got a go real on. band behind it. Real drums, real guitar, brass. Oh. Real brass. Not that synth. It would, that would be an awesome, awesome song. Do you know what? That would make my day. That would make my year. It would, it would, I'd buy that. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, this this morning we want to know um, songs that you like, but actually you're a little bit ashamed of liking. There's no, well, they, they, I guess they used to be called the guilty pleasures, but I think this mm. is even more than guilt. This is actual shame. Mm. That I think you so. Feel. I'm going to give you, instead of just a song, I'm going to give you an artist. Oh, okay? buddy, some, come on. Some, somebody that I've loved for years. Yep. I think his music is absolutely fantastic. I've interviewed him as well. Really nice guy, Neil Sedaka. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Neil yep. Sedaka. Come on. The tiny, the campest married man yep. in the world. <laughs> it's funny, Justin, you must have special powers because the person I was going to suggest is almost like an anagram of Neil Sedaka. Saden Le Bon. Would it be... John Takada. <laughs> oh, stay another day. Was it That's a good day? song. No, brilliant. Just another day. Can I just, just say, another day? That was it. 
can I just say there is you know there is a curse attached to this show. We talk about old people. Yeah. No, 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 Let's just let's just watch the the news wires over no, this. No, it's not going to happen. If you think positive, Neil Sedaka is an absolute legend. And why is it? You know, if you say to somebody, "What music do you like?" There must be so many Sedaka fans out there that, that would never admit that they love his music. Well, Sedaka, think, of course, you know, was was like one one of the first kind of pop stars in the 1950s, songwriter. Mm, uh, yeah. And then he became like hits on his own. And then the Beatles came and they yep. smashed Sedaka. Mm -hmm. um, and he couldn't get couldn't get a hit or a recording contract, so he moved over here and he he started playing the working men's. I saw a brilliant documentary about him. He started playing the working men's clubs up north like yeah. doing, doing the hits and stuff until Elton John went flipping it you're Neil Sedaka and he gave him a recording <laughs> a record contract he's also a member of another elite gang of musicians not just the you know ones just like be ashamed of no men who sound like women I think there's a very feminine quality yeah, to his yeah, yeah, yeah. Prince, yeah. Oh, I hear laughter in the rain, walking walk hand, hand in hand. He's with girlish. The... Yeah. He's girlish. He's good. He's good. There's, a, um, there's some brilliant Sadaka footage on YouTube. If you want to see a short, fat, round man in, um, in dungarees, I think he's in, I, I'm sure I remember him, him being in pink dungarees. I'll find yeah. it when we play the next song. The next song, by the way, Justin, Julian Lennon, Too Late for Goodbyes. Oh, what yeah. a track. Working it. There's footage of, of Sadaka in the 70s. I'm sure he's in pink dungarees. And he's playing the song at the piano, and then there's an instrumental break. So he gets up and he dances. Oh, no. I'm going to dig that out. I'm going to dig that out. Please. Speaking of music, Justin. Yes, boss. A Luton jazz club is at the centre of a row over reasonable noise levels. The Bear Club... This is, this is happening all over the country to small music venues. I don't like jazz. Couldn't, stand, couldn't give a stuff about jazz. But mm. I do like small music venues. I don't go yes. anymore, but I know they, are, they were important to me when I was younger. The old Trout in Windsor, guys. Aye. They were important to me when they were younger, and they are important to um, to bands, to bands that are either coming up or going back down. Well, there's nothing like this in Luton, and if you look online, I know we don't take news from social media, but everyone's kicking up about it because they love it. There. The Bear Club is about to be issued... This is happening all across the country, and it's, I do think it's shameful. It's to be issued with a noise abatement order, despite the fact it, it isn't the only live uh, music venue in the street. The other, the Hat Factory, has links with Luton Borough Council. Mm, ah, mm, oh, see, I wonder, I wonder. Uh, Daily, you've got the details. This all kicked off before the yeah. order has been issued. Well, explain what's going on, Justin. Well, well, well the owner is a guy called uh, Justin Doherty, uh, who is currently out of the country, but uh, he's been told he will be receiving this notice on his return. Uh, a noise abatement notice is issued by a local authority after a number of complaints are made. Uh, and they, of course, they can force a venue to close, restrict the volume or restrict the time that are all to do with the noise. Uh, a venue does have 21 days to appeal the order or they can just go along with what it says. But uh, Justin, in this case, has said because of the kind of venue that he's running, well, he wouldn't be able to, to keep within the restrictions, which could mean prosecution and fines of up to £20,000. So um, he now says that, that he's going to close the club from next month, which has sparked many people who go to the club uh, for them to, to rally support this petition. Uh, that's been uh, sent to Lucenborough Council. Um, already over 1,500 signatures in just one day. So obviously a lot of people find this club very, very popular. And Justin Doherty as well has posted a statement online to let his customers know what's happening, where he described the notice as essentially a gagging order and that he'll be making a plan once they actually see the notice. The club will be closing on the 14th of November. So that's what's going to be happening. And Catherine says about social media, a lot of people have been on there. They can't understand uh, what, what exactly is going on here, really. Um, how long's it been? Do we know how long it's been there, Kath? Is... It's quite new, I think. Right. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, okay. What's the council's response? Well, guess what? They say they can't make comment on individual cases. Yes, you but, yes. can. <laughs> yes, you can. That's such bullshit. Of course, well, you can. But they haven't issued the notice yet. Yeah, I'll issue this notice and I'm raising my middle finger, Justin. They say they can't comment on individual cases that could lead to, to, to legal action, but that here, here comes the interesting bit, but that excessive noise can make life a misery and everybody has a right to live in their home oh, without suffering that. a noise nuisance. They also that. say that when they are satisfied that a noise nuisance exists, they have a duty to serve an abatement notice requiring a venue to stop causing the nuisance. Uh, the thing Luke is, Burke, yeah, it goes on, it goes yeah, on. Yeah, Sean Timoney, who's the deputy leader, did speak out again on Twitter, and she said the notice that we're given does not mean they have to close. 
Yes, but oh. you know the, oh. what what the owner's saying is it's all very well serving a notice like that, mm -hmm. but if you're going to serve that notice, how can they run a club with, with the kind of limitations which they've been given? Which means they're going to have to but close. He's, he's the not club. seen it yet. He doesn't know what the restrictions are. I mean, there's I, an assumption there, isn't there? I mm. can see both. I can see both sides of the story. You don't want to live next to somewhere that's noisy. And if it's new, if it's been there like thirty years, you don't move next to a place that's that's noisy. If it's new, okay. Um, but I can also uh, see that he's perhaps. Um, um, stirring it a little bit to try without you're right without having seen the order, uh, mm. you, you don't quite know that it's going to force you to close. So maybe he's stirring it, and maybe there's uh, other things going on. Hard to know without being able to speak to him, isn't it? Isn't it hard to know? And do you yeah. like my word stirring? <laughs> do you, you... It reminds me of someone. <laughs> he's out of the country, but sad. Well, you you think that the phones would exist uh, where he is at the moment, but, uh, but yeah, America. apparently. <laughs> in America. In America. Yeah. Phones do exist in America, guys. Shameful, um, shameful music. Scott's got a good one. On Twitter, I'm ashamed of loving Brian Adams and Mel C's duet. Yeah, I like Ooh, that. I, I, I've got, got a soft spot. Do, do, do you know, but in America, is someone else doing the Mel C bit? What? Yeah, I'm sure, Ooh, right? They you're do saying this... to me they were never in the studio together. They do. Th I'm sure I've got this right, OK? They do this with Disney films, is that they'll regionalise them, i.e., with the Disney films, there'll be like a, a, a character that has one song and is, you know, is kind of hidden away a bit. Um, and in, in England, it'll be an English person. In America, it'll be an American person. Gosh. Uh, and I'm sure that with the Mel C song, there is a version that he does, I'm going to say with Janet Jackson. It's, no. it's someone like that. I'm sure it is. Let me have a look. I have got a soft spot for Mel C. Yeah. I, think, I think her song, I quite like her solo stuff. And I interviewed her years ago, right? In real life, Justin, she is stunning. Well, she we has met, got... didn't we, at the, the, the Radio Academy Awards? Yeah, yeah. She, oh, yeah she's lovely. stunning. She came up to me. Ten out of ten. How's it going? She came up to me. Mm. Remember yeah, that? Were you there, Kath? Yeah, I was Can there. I tell you that? Mel C came up to me. All right, Ian, how you doing? Yeah, that's right. Spice Girl came up to me. Um, she's got beautiful eyes. I've got a soft spot for the Mel C genre. She's got her own genre. It's it's, it's soft rock. <laughs> Dealey, take it to the streets. I'll talk to you in a bit. Cheers. Cheers, my dear. Ta-ta. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1 southbound, it's quite slow from Junction 10 for... I've lost the screen. It's gone away. <laughs> I'm looking at the map. It's so very tense. Do, do you, it's it's, it's very tense. Do you, gone away. Well, do, do you, we, listen, we can, we can just pretend this never happened and move on. Yeah, don't make stuff don't up. We? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that it was, was, I was trying to remember it from the last time. Hang on. No, I've, got don't, the screen Sammy, back. I've got the screen back. You've I've embarrassed yourself. I know, and, that's terrible, okay. isn't it? Um, Time for Dunstable. It's busy in Dunstable. It's too late. A5. It's too late. It's not busy in Dunstable. It's too late. It is. It's too late. It's too late. This listen. This let's forget this ever happened. This is this is uncomfortable for everybody involved, myself included. <laughs> and it's not busy in Dunsmore. I can look out the window. There's nothing there. Well, well, it is on the A. Can you see the A5? Um, oh no, but you know it's what you expect on the A5. Sammy, I'm going to give you three out of ten. <laughs> we'll speak to you in fifteen minutes. <laughs> or quite okay. Across beds, hearts, and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 6.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emil Stapleton in St Albans last month and a convicted rapist was detained by police in Blackpool last night after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. Three Counties Sport. BBC Three Counties Radio. A much-needed win for Milton Keynes Dons last night as they beat Charlton 1-0 at Stadium MK. Dean Bowditch scored the only goal in the first half to leave the Dons still 20th in the Championship, but now four points clear of the relegation zone. Here's manager Carl Robinson. We should have had a convincing victory here, 3-4-0, mm. I think. That's not being disrespectful to the opposition. But when you create so many chances like we did... We need to take them. A um, nicely crafted goal as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, probably the hardest one we took. It was a, we <laughs> bought a lot of big risks today. In probably one of the biggest games I've had as manager. And um, yeah, they all paid off, thankfully. Manchester City are through to the knockout stage of the Champions League after a 3-1 win in Spain at Sevilla. Wayne Rooney scored the only goal as Manchester United beat CSKA Moscow 1-0 at Old Trafford to the delight of manager Louis van Gaal. Rooney with a header! Completely unmarked! 11 minutes left for play at Old Trafford. 
Wayne is Wayne and uh, he shall always contribute in, in a game. I'm very happy because <laughs> I put him again in the striker's position and then he scored and it was a fantastic goal. Tonight, Arsenal visit Bayern Munich, Chelsea host Dynamo Kiev. Stevenage have confirmed that manager Teddy Sheringham won't be coming out of retirement to play in the Hearts Senior Cup at Welling Garden City tonight. The club say that the 49-year-old former England striker and his assistant Kevin Watson were both registered as a precaution. And England have taken an early wicket on day four of the third and final test in Sharjah. A short while ago, Pakistan were 160 for four. That's a lead of 88. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin at seven. Dirty, dirty northerners. You, uh, by the way, the uh, the duet. Why are you saying that, looking at me? Um, the uh, duet that, um, that, that that Brian Adams, Mel C, which we're going to play in a little bit. Um, the American version was done with Ms. Pamela Anderson. Gosh, she can Ms. sing. Pamela. <laughs> and then All we this got, in a voice too. And then we got to talking about the video, and then I mentioned um, the boat. That's the only bit I saw was the boat. It really was, was enough, was it? It was. It was. It was plenty. Um, uh, yeah, you dirty northerners. Dirty. 
Do you know why you're dirty? I'll tell you why. Smoking our heads off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Northern Lights <laughs> is the headline, <laughs> which is brilliant. The UK smoking capitals, where one in four people light up, are Blackpool, mm-hmm. Kingston upon Hull, oh, and Manchester. Yeah, that sounds about right. It is the it's it's like the 1970s up there, Smokesville, Arizona, USA. Well, no, we've not got the mills. You see, you've got to have the chimney somehow. Oh dearie, dearie me, you dirty, dirty smokers. Uh, well, a lot of my family have packed up. Though. Well, I say packed up. They've switched to vaping. So they're still smoking then, yeah? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, here's the thing, right? This, um, uh, we're supposed to be... A callous cabbie. Now, I don't think this cabbie's done much wrong. OK, hit me with if it and I'll tell you. If the words that he said... Uh, all right. A callous cabbie demanded extra cash from a dementia patient who directed him to her two previous addresses. Right. Widow Joyce Gibson, 79, got confused on her way back to her sheltered housing from hospital. When the driver arrived at her Leicester home, he insisted she give him four pounds for the detours. He told Joyce's granddaughter, Rachel, people like her should not be allowed out. Boom. The driver left only when a tearful Rachel, 32, called his boss. Um, is this, oh yeah. Rachel said, he treated my nan like a piece of dirt. Now, people like her should not be allowed out. Callous. You could have you could have rephrased that with people like her should not be allowed out without people uh, without help. Why weren't you with her? Without help. Mm-hmm. But I don't have a problem with him asking for the extra four quid. I don't see what the problem is. What's really? Yeah, he'd... you wouldn't know. Well, I wouldn't. You but would... I, four exactly. quid. Exactly. So I, I... why wouldn't you? Because I can afford to lose four quid. Right. Right. This fella quite possibly couldn't. And it's his, into, it's his job. Mm. So he's supposed to offer like a, a, an ambulance service for, for dementia no, patients. No, no, no. But I mean, it doesn't happen every day, for heaven's sake. All right. Does he know? A, he doesn't know that she's got dementia. And B, she took she's him. She's an old lady who made a mistake. Twice. Yeah. She took so him that to two. be a little flag for you, shouldn't it? Yeah, a little flag. Said, do you know what? Get out. <gasps> if it was kids doing it. Oh, it's here. Oh, no, it's not. It's around the corner. Oh, that's oh, no, different. It's not. Oh, come on, that's different. I, the, this fella, it's his job. God, is you're to... so cold. No, I'm not cold. I just think that if you work, you should get paid for the work that you're doing. She, yeah, she muffed up. Yeah, absolutely, but I would want to take said... money off someone who no. was having a, a struggling like that. I blame Rachel, the granddaughter. I do think, right, if, you know... Rachel should have dipped her hand in her pocket and said, I'm really I'm really sorry for the confusion. Rachel should have met from hospital. How much should have happened? A... No, no, no. I did, yeah, 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 she should have gone with her. Rachel should have put her hand in the pocket. So I'm really sorry, drive. Was it an ex- extra four quid? Yeah, not. To, hang on a minute. Here's a five. But that's down to Rachel to offer. You shouldn't be demanding it. What, what the flip it? Why don't you just go? What, 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 of course, he should be demanding oh, it. Oh no! Come on. He has to charge for. I know, but it, she's what? not well. Understand. She's not well. So what? It's part of her condition. Yeah, part of his condition is he gets paid for driving people to places, and if they take him to the wrong place, he's allowed to get charge a few extra no, quid. No, it's like if you had a pregnant woman in the back of the car. Yeah, and her on, water's, where's, this, where's this going? Right, and her water's broke. Yep. Again, not her fault. Yep. Part of her condition. She's not done it on purpose. Yep, I'd ask for the cleaning. Charging her for the cleaning. Yes, completely. Completely! Now, I think I would offer if I was the pregnant woman in question. Well, it's a bit tight to ask, isn't it? Can we put this out there? Because I, I genuinely, I, I, hey, 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 here's an old boy, Dennis. Yes, good morning. This driver's right, isn't he, to ask for the extra four quid? Correct, because I didn't. When I was taxiing, I had. Here we go. Stuff. When he was taxiing with what was it, Louis? Who did you used to know, Louis Gossett Junior? Uh, no, somebody spewed up in my car Don't when Cheney. I was taking something. I stopped the car, turfed the bloke out and told him I wasn't moving an inch until he'd cleaned the car Yeah, out. but throwing up is something different. Well, you brought up water's breaking. Yeah, but... It's an illness. Right, why did he throw up? Was he drunk or was he... Naturally. Right, OK, so, yeah, his own but, fault. But anyway, I object to him... Yeah, she, she no got pregnant. Jersey. Her own fault. <laughs> oh, wow. Her own fault. Puts a, to quote uh, Mr Carl, put something on the end of it. I think he means a, a, a condom. On oh, a band's really? winkle, I think. <laughs> Which I don't know. That. I know exactly. After <laughs> years of heck. after years of uh, investigating, I think he means a condom Gosh, on a winkle wow. to stop the um, the the seeds impregnating Is that what the it lady. Does? Yeah, 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 yeah. It stops it. It's like a barrier. Gosh. It's like a barrier. It stops it. I would have a much nicer house if I'd have known that. There we go. Oh, cleaner. Anyway, Dennis. Good morning. Good morning, Vietnam. What would you like to say? She means How in terms of having children. And, and my me. What? Dirty Northerners. We yeah. came down here to educate you people. You're on how to spark up and roll up. <laughs> yeah. 
No, no. Never smoked a cigarette in my life. Lightweight. Bottle no. up. <laughs> I had um, someone I know, well, my dad's mate, was going out with a woman for a long time, an Italian woman. Must be tired. Listen. <laughs> Even Kat's getting bored of the act. Flip it. If Kat's bored of the act, I've got no one to turn to, Jen. She used to smoke, and here we go, a pipe. Oh, 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 oh lady pipe smokers. <laughs> now, would that put you off? Because when I was growing up, Dad said, oh, don't smoke, it'll put lads off you. A lady it doesn't smoking really. a pipe. If the lads are also smoking, it, it would, doesn't really. It would certainly it, it show an interest <laughs> in, in techniques. <laughs> Hmm? Wouldn't it, Dennis? A pipe, like Popeye. A, a Popeye pipe, guys. <laughs> oh three four five nine four double five five double five. I think this cabbie is absolutely spot on. for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. It's slow on the M1 southbound from Junction 12 for Flittick to 11 for Dunstable and the A1M southbound is also looking very busy around Junction 7 for the A602 at Stevenage. On the A1M it's busy southbound between Junction 2 for Wellham Green and the M25 at South Mims and on the North Orbital Road as well it's busy at the M25 Junction 21A roundabout. In Borehamwood the A1 is busy southbound from the Holiday Inn towards Mill Hill Circus heading through Stirling and Apex Corners and looking at the train departure boards the 653 service from Milton Keynes Central to London Euston is delayed by half an hour. Smart the breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. There we go, Sammy. Get back on that horse and ride, baby, ride. 
6.46, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emil Stapleton in St Albans last month. And a convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. Let's get the web. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. A little bit of mist out there this morning. It is gradually lifting, but it is a rather grey and wet start. Our weather watcher, Simon, uh, says this as well, coming from Hockerill. We've got some light rain out there and it's pushing across all three counties. Some heavier bursts mixed in there as well. And we could see these showers throughout much of the day, gradually becoming a bit fewer and further between uh, through the afternoon. And it's staying mild as well. Despite the cloud and the rain, we're looking at a maximum of 14 Celsius. Overnight tonight, further showers expected but again the middle part becoming a bit drier we could see the cloud part a little and if we do we could get a bit of mist developing there as well minimum temperature 10 celsius for tomorrow more of the same may get a bit of brightness at first but predominantly cloudy and some rain pushing across all three counties again staying mild tomorrow though with a maximum of 15 celsius that's your forecast ah they've they've made us all part of it the weather watchers Imagine having your own personal newsreader. It's 10.52 and the latest headline it's is... now 12.09. Police in MK looking for hit-and-run bike rider. With our new local live service, you don't have to imagine anymore. Beds, Hearts and Bucks Live is available on your phone, laptop and tablet and keeps you up to date with the latest news. Sport. Milton Keynes Storms have announced that Keith Andrews has retired as a player to become first team coach at Stadium MK. Travel. Still got this closure in at uh, Buntingford. Weather. We may get some hazy sunshine by the end of the afternoon. And everything across Beds, Hearts and Bucks. Police in Hertfordshire say missing 83-year-old from Letchworth has been found safe and well in Ashwell. To make sure you're up to date with everything locally, go to bbc.co.uk UK slash three counties and follow the links. Beds, Hearts and Bucks live wherever you are and whenever you need it.
Morning, Danny. Morning. Thank you. Good song, huh? Oh, beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, boy, has got a story to that song. She was I dumped have... on. No, I'd been dumped. Dumped? I'd been dumped, but no. it was a good, it was a, a happy release, so to speak. You went um, c- 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 crazy. Wow. Good girl, good girl. Classic song. We're talking about music that, um, y- you know, that there's <laughs> shame attached to it. And apart from Coldplay, there is, you should feel no I wasn't shame. ashamed of it. What are you talking about? Sorry? Shame. I um I remember when I used to work in HMV. I uh, I worked for I had a, a Christmas job at HMV many years ago before I became a celebrity. <laughs> oh, and uh, they always they always used to laugh at me. I said I'm going to be an actor. Yeah, okay. Well, we think you make great management material. Why the, the, the boss? <laughs> I filled in the application form for the job at HMV, and the boss. I took the job because he reminded me of a, a, a bloke um, called uh, Jason who'd gone to, who'd been in college the year above me. Sorry? Are you vaping, Joss? Sorry. I could hear you breathing really heavily. No, 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 no. It's, it's just the streets, just the streets. And um, he, he said, he said, I, I, I really enjoyed your application form. I've been really looking forward to meeting you. Enjoyed it. Yeah, because I wrote. I when I listen when I applied for jobs, I wrote flipping excellent application form. <laughs> I mean, really, I went to town on it. I was, I was a bright lad. He, and he said, I think you've, I've been really looking forward to meeting you. Your application form is, is, is the best I've seen. I took it home to show my wife. There's, that's <laughs> that's how good I was. Then they accused me of stealing money, which I hadn't actually done. It was a dodgy Arab that was going around doing a con on people. So please, thank you. Anyway, you're right, a bit just harsh, a bit harsh to blame the dodgy Arab. It, well, it, it was there was a, there was a con going around that no one ever explained to me. Where a dodgy Arab yeah. would, which is in Slough, would come into if a you shop. Got proof, if you got proof of the uh, dodgy Arab, th- there will be CCTV, CCTV. footage, right? Mm. He'd go into shops, right? It was two two men, and I never knew what the con was with a fifty pound note, and they'd mm. come out with like a hundred quid. I don't know how it worked. They, they thought I was involved in that. Anyway. Oh, what was that TV show? They used to go on, uh, they used to go into bars and places and play tricks like oh, that on people. Uh, um, it's on BBC Three. Chances. Real uh, Hustle. No, the Real Hustle. Re- oh, it's brilliant. It was, was absolutely brilliant. I was on that. Were you? They did, they did Celebrity Real Hustle, right? And I was yeah. on it. Again, I mean. It was, I know, I mean, <laughs> about on the barrel, but it, it paid quite well. It was brilliant. What we did, right, is I'm, they didn't tell you what you're going to do. And I had to meet them in, around the back of some shops, right? <laughs> and there's the three of them. The girl wasn't involved, but she was there to explain it, right? And I had the two lads, and they said, right, what we're going to do, it was brilliant. I, I put on a fluorescent jacket. You've got a fluorescent jacket on. You, you can, can get in anything. anywhere. Yeah. We went up to this girl's house, right? We knocked on the door. Right? <laughs> And one of them said, yeah, there's a problem with the water. We've come to check the water. Is right if we come in? She went, yeah, yeah, of course it is. Right? They went, they stayed downstairs. And my part was I had to take her upstairs, right, oh, yeah. into the bathroom and turn the taps on, right? And then while I was upstairs, the other two were nicking Xbox, PlayStation. Oh, I, I put, they put it all into these sacks, right? And when they're done, they go, <sighs> all right, we're ready. And I then had to go, right, they just put some dye in. I'm going to go downstairs and check. When the water starts turning purple, can you shout out? <gasps> we led it downstairs, jumped in the van and drove off with all their stuff. It was the most... That's uh, quite a common con, isn't it? And at the end, they film you and they go, right, describe how it felt. And I went, it was a rush. I loved it. It was the most <laughs> exciting thing ever. They went, yeah, could you do it again? <laughs> but with a bit of remorse. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. Anyway. Uh, we've got yeah. Caller, we've got you, Justin. Music yep. that we shouldn't be ashamed of, yet somehow we are. You've taken this to the streets. Yeah, music you're ashamed of. Also, music you would never admit to anybody yeah. that you love, especially now. Here's what the streets had to say. Neil Diamond. Not these days, don't I? <laughs> not, where I, not where I work, no. So if you went and you said, right, do you know what, guys? I love Neil Diamond. What do you think would happen? The reaction I get where they just laugh at me. Anybody else you want to put in that list? Girls Aloud. Happy Hardcore. Smiley faces and uh, all the T-shirts and all that and, you know, white gloves. Probably Girls Aloud. Girls Aloud? Yeah. Who's your, um, who's your favourite member of Girls Aloud? I know it's a tough question. I know it's early in the morning, but when you think about it, you can come up with the answer. Who's your favourite girl? Uh, Sarah Harding. Can I ask why? It's the blonde hair. Thanks for getting deep on the streets. No ways at all. <laughs> okay, we're talking about uh, embarrassing music this morning. Is there a singer or a band that you would never admit that you like because you think people will take the mickey out of you? Um, Chico. <laughs> <laughs> Chico! Yeah, because he was at party in the park, yeah. wasn't he? He's great. But you know what, Chico, he's ripped. And do you know what? He can sing. Yeah, he's got yeah. good voice, but I don't know where that American twang come from that he's got. <laughs> so you never go shouting about it to your friends, but you're shouting about him right now on the radio. We yeah. like that. Yeah. 
Have it. It's Wednesday. Have it. It's Chico time. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> the thi- I- I've met Chico. Again, this thing I said the other day, when you've been on the telly, you can talk to other people on the telly. I was in a vegetarian restaurant on the Holloway Road. I think anyone could talk to Chico. <laughs> Ch- but Chico <laughs> came up to me. All right. Chico approached me. Dealey, mm. beautiful stuff. Can you take Thank this you. one to the streets? I'll give mm. you the paper when you pop in. This thing about the cabbie. Yeah. I don't know if you heard me talking about it. Cabbie um, took an old woman home. She got the address wrong twice. Got, got there on the third go. And he asked for... An extra four She's quid. She's got dementia, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. It turned yeah. out she had dementia. Yeah. But, but he didn't know that at the time, did he? No, of course he didn't. I yeah. think he was right to ask for the money. I think I might be a voice in the wilderness. Can you take that to the streets, Josh? Absolutely, no problem come, at all. Come and grab the story off, Danny. Um, I'm just moving on because I want to get to uh, Eddie. Morning, Eddie. Hello. Hello, Stretch. Morning. S- Hello, Stretch? Yeah. Stretch Armstrong, you're you calling right? me? Pardon? Are you calling me Stretch Armstrong? No, stretch as in you're tall and lanky. Wow. Wowzers. That's, okay. that's an opener. That's. <laughs> I, I'm going to take that as the compliment I know you mean it to be, Edward. <laughs> what have you, no, he's a compliment. What you got for us, boss? What you got for us, Tiny? I just like, just regarding the uh, the song you just played. Yes. It's the wrong version. Oh. You, you, uh, you this the Mel C, which can't be done. No, I've we've, we've done. Uh, Go on. You played the Pamela Anderson version, I believe. That was the Mel C version, you plum. No, it was yeah. not Mel. That was not the Mel C. Uh, yes, it was. It was the Mel C. That was not Mel C. That was Mel C. Look, I'm on the ball, okay. Your other listeners may still be half asleep. Yeah, you're on a ball that sounds like it's filled up with drugs or something. <laughs> that was Mel C. Ah, uh, I don't, I don't think so. I, I, I accept your apology, madam. That was Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the A40 Western Avenue heading into London, it's very slow from the Swakeley's roundabout towards the North Circular Road at the Hangar Lane Gyratory. On the M25, it's busy anti-clockwise from Junction 21 for the M1 to 19 for Watford. And it's also slow on the M1 southbound between Junction 12 for Flittick and 11 for Dunstable. The roads are looking very wet as well, so visibility could be a problem. On the train departure towards the 720 train from Hartford North to Moorgate, it's been cancelled. Samantha Bruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy, thank you very much indeed. That was Mel C. That was Sammy Bruff, but the song was Mel C. Seriously, I think this cabbie, it could have handled it slightly differently maybe, but I think he was absolutely right to ask for the four quid. It's his job. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's seven o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, police block memorial plaque for Leon Briggs at Luton Station. Man charged with St Albans murder and vital win for Milton Keynes Dons. BBC Three Counties Radio. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. It was due to be unveiled outside Luton Police Station tonight. More from Matt Lockwood. Leon Briggs died in November 2013 after being detained under the Mental Health Act. This plaque was designed to replace a large floral memorial placed outside the station. His family say they've worked with the police over the wording and now feel badly let down. Bedfordshire police say they've postponed the plaque going up whilst they seek legal advice on the implications it may have for any future proceedings. Six officers are suspended while the Independent Police Complaints Commission investigation continues. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. Emile died in hospital after an incident in the city centre in the early hours of Saturday, October the 24th. 26-year-old Paul Crosby from Camden is due at Hatfield Remand Court. Ten other people arrested in connection with the inquiry remain on police bail. A convicted rapist has been detained by police after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. 58-year-old Malcolm Millman went missing during a visit to a monastery near Hemel Hempstead on October the 24th. Thames Valley Police say he was detained in Blackpool at around 8.30 last night under the Mental Health Act. Millman was convicted in 1996 after violent attacks on young women and was under the care of Chadwick Lodge in Eaglestone. Internet firms will have to store details of people's online activity for 12 months under the government's new surveillance law to be published later today. Ministers are promising strict safeguards, which it's thought will include judges authorising the most intrusive surveillance. 
MPs will debate police funding today with one of the most senior police chiefs in the country saying she's worried about the future of Bedfordshire Police. Bed's Police Commissioner Ollie Martin says he would welcome sponsorship of uniforms and police cars to help boost finances. The force is also said to be considering using speed cameras to enforce the 70 miles per hour speed limit on the M1 to raise revenue. The head of the National Police Chiefs Council and former Thames Valley Chief Constable Sarah Thornton says the situation is worrying. Has somebody in the Home Office or the Inspectorate really look carefully at the maths on this to make sure these forces are viable. Now, I'm not sure they've done it for all forces, so mm. places like Bedfordshire, I am very concerned about Thank- The Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, is claiming that three-quarters of junior doctors will be better off under a new contract. He says there will be an 11% increase in basic pay, although there will be cuts to extra payments for working on social hours. In sport, a much-needed win for Milton Keynes-Dons last night in the Championship. Runners inside the area. Bowditch is there. Bowditch makes it 1-0 to MK Dons. Great move from the home side. It was Carruthers and Bowditch who combined, and MK Dons have taken the lead at home. Milton Keynes-Dons won. The weather, cloudy and wet this morning, some sunny intervals this afternoon, a maximum temperature 13 degrees Celsius, and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Thank you, Simon. Morning, Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Hardly touched on the uh, con that is the hygienist. We'll get to that later on, maybe. Taxi driver, he's driving an old woman around. She keeps getting the address wrong. Third time they get there, he asks for an extra four quid. Now, I don't see a problem with that. Oh, yeah, she's got dementia, but, I mean, is he medically trained? Is he supposed to know that? The person at the other end should have put their hand in their pocket. Not the only person that thinks that. It feels like it. Also, we shouldn't be ashamed about any of our music, apart from the Coldplay, who are awful. Music for people who don't like music. Don't be, I couldn't believe that fellow was saying Neil Diamond. I mean, I was brought up on Neil Diamond. It was Neil Diamond and Dr Hook in my house. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. That was the point of the... St- I remembered why I was talking about HMV. I remembered why. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I remembered why I was talking about HMV, because when I worked there, there was loads of, like, hipsters there, before hipsters... Uh, pre- it was pre-hipsters, but there was, like, there was, like, a metaler there, and there were a couple of hipsters, mm-hmm. and there was, like, a, a dance-trance kind of guy, and there's me bumbling in there, banging on about the monkeys. Gosh, it's like the male Spice Girls, isn't it? And the metaler... I'm ignoring that, because I don't quite understand it. The um, metaler took me t- to one side one day and said, I'll be honest, Ian, I've got a lot of respect for you. You come in here and you talk about the monkeys, right, and you don't care what anyone thinks about you. I like that. I like that a lot. I thought, yes, exactly. And then I realised, hang on a minute, I think he was insulting me in a some bit, kind yeah. of way. Yeah, I think he but, was actually But then not. Oh. What I meant by that was, cause, you know, so many different flavours of, uh, of of man. What's, the... what's your flavour? Mine. Just have a cough, because there's a bit there. Go on, have a proper cough, because I can hear it. It's annoying <coughs> me. Thank you very much indeed. We got that out. What's your flavour? What's my flavour? What of? Man. Um, slow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, slow, slow hand. Easy to catch. Yeah, we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Eric Clapton, isn't it? Oh three four five nine four double five five double five. What's what's your flavour? Oh man, we're just we're just throwing that out there and, and seeing where that goes. Uh eight one three double three, you can start your text three CR now. The family of a Luton man who died in police custody say they feel badly let down by Bedfordshire police after they blocked a memorial plaque. The plaque for Leon Briggs was due to be put up tonight at Luton Police Station on the second anniversary of his death. He died in police custody after being detained under the Mental Health Act. We can speak now to uh, Liberty Louise from the Justice for Leon campaign group. Morning, Liberty. Good morning, Ian. So how long has this um, plaque been planned for? Um, well... Initially, the memorial was taken down on the premise that a plaque would be um, put in its place. Otherwise, the memorial site, it it wasn't going to be agreed that um, Leon's mum and and daughter actually had to go down there to remove the teddy bears and everything. The the memorial, for those who don't know, because uh, uh, um, I saw a picture of it, the memorial was was bigger than the plaque. It, It could be described by some as being a little bit messy. And I say that with the greatest respect because I know the significance, but it was kind of, have I got this right, it was pictures and cards and flowers and and teddies kind of just just stuck to the front of the building. Is that right? 
Yeah, I kind of take a little bit of... Um, I, I don't think that's correct in saying it was messy. No, 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 I'm just... No, 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 I'm just... I'm going to... Liberty, up, liberty but, I'm going to say it yeah, again. Okay. No, Liberty, you, Liberty, you I'm going to say... say no, I'm, uh, some people could could perceive it as being messy. I'm not saying that's necessarily what I think, but some people could perceive it as being messy. But not a terrorist risk. No, 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 no. I didn't mention a terrorist <laughs> risk. I'm saying no, some people could perceive what, it as that's being what messy. The police, that's what the police wanted it removed for, because it was yeah. perceived... As a terrorist risk. Which, some people could, uh, but which... some people could perceive a pile of stuff piled outside a police station as being messy. They could perceive. They that. could do. There we go. So that was taken down. Um, and when uh, when did was the and the plaque was discussed before that was taken down? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was discussed. Um, you know, to basically say, uh, right, okay, this has to come down because it's a terrorist risk. But instead, we'll we'll have something to go up in its place, and that was what was agreed. Okay. And um, what was agreed for the that, that would go on the plaque? Nothing was agreed that would actually go on the plaque. But I knew, I knew that um, I could that there couldn't be anything that um, pointed the finger at anybody. That it couldn't be, um, you know, to be accusing anyone or to blame. And uh, let's just get this straight: this plaque had nothing to do with the investigation. It wasn't saying it wasn't trying to say this is going up because the police are at fault or they're guilty. It was completely separate from the investigation. This was. Something for the family to have to go, like they had the memorial site that was dignified. You know, it didn't take up a whole wall. It was a plaque. The same as any other civilian would be remembered for dying at a certain area would have a plaque or a memorial, which is what we thought was, you know, at the end of the day, Leon was a human being. Mm. Um, some amendments were made, weren't they? No justice, no peace was, was asked to be removed. Yeah, that's right. And everybody was happy with that being taken away. Because that, that could yeah. be seen as being slightly inflammatory, couldn't it? Yeah, it could. Um, but at the end of the day, I was willing to compromise and, yeah. and put some of my feelings to one side. Um, even, you know, I didn't really speak to the police before, but I took that to one side, cooperated fully, attended meetings, took the plaque with me. You know, I was open. I was honest. And... Um, I expected the same back, to be honest. But mm. So they had ag- the police had agreed to the plaque, and, yep. then, and then when did you find out that they changed their mind? Monday at five o'clock in the evening after work. And what, did you get a phone call or an email? What yeah. happened? Yeah, I got a phone call saying, um, uh, oh, right, you know, it was quite a frantic phone call. Something's come up. Um, and they said, we're just asking you to listen to what we're saying now. Uh, uh, before saying anything, and I thought, right, okay, I knew what was coming at that point. And they said, uh, uh, the staff association at Beds Police have raised a legal issue, and I and I asked what the legal, you know, legal challenge was, and they said um, it could breach Article Six, the right to a fair trial. And I thought, well, hang on a minute, there isn't a trial going ahead. Mm. Um, so I think what they were saying is it could jeopardise. Um, say the officers, for instance, if they were involved in the trial. Um, but it doesn't mention the circumstances. It just marks the location and the date, doesn't it? Have I, have I got that right? <laughs> R.I.P. Leon Briggs, yeah. 4th November 2013. That was it. Well, those facts are already in the public domain. So how can that undermine any investigation or any any trial? Those mm. facts are already in the public domain. I've spoken to um, Atik Malik, um, who obviously knows about law, about the Article 6, and... Um, He's a, he's you a know, solicitor that, 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 that often it gets yeah. involved with cases. Uh, yeah, um, he's yeah. part of the um, justice, uh, uh, lo- you know, looting for justice, and yeah. um, so he's he's helped us a lot with uh, what we do. Um, and yeah, and and you know, he it's actual fact, regardless of um, you know, it doesn't for a start. The plaque only states what's already been out in the press for two years. <laughs> um, there must be, um, I, I imagine, disappointment amongst um, family and friends. That's probably an understatement. Well, it's, it's, it's more or less like a betrayal. We were told not to go to, you know, oh, don't put anything out in the press yet, try and stay off social media. Oh, I bet they did, and, yeah. Yeah, and I agreed, and I went along with it. You know, and me, usually being me, that thinks, no, I don't care, I'm going to put it out there. But this time, I put it to one side because it was for a greater good. Um didn't want to jeopardise anything with, you know, Leon's plaque going up. And, um, you know, lastminute.com, you get a phone call. Oh, guess what? It's not happening. Um, but I'm still at the memorial service. is still going ahead this evening. I was going to say, there was... Gonna take the, yeah, and I'm going to give the chance to police to do what they promised, and I'm going to bring that plaque oh. down there. Well, they're not going to put it up tonight, are they? 
Well, they're not, but they did promise that. And I'd like to see them stick to their promise because they did say they would do that. So I'm going to, like I did, I was honest and I stuck to everything I agreed to with them. I'm hoping they will, but I'm still going to take it down to see if they will. Is is there not a fear that um, <clears throat> you want justice for Leon, obviously? That's, you know, that's the thing. That the, 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 the battle over the plaque becomes the story as opposed to what may or may not have happened to Leon yeah. Briggs in police yeah. custody. Is that, does that totally, not concern you? Totally. The, t- the timing, uh, you know, no. If anything, it shows that the family have had to struggle for every little piece of dignity to do with Leon dying. Um, the IPCC taking two years. Um, the memorial site being taken down. Everything. This is just like an added insult, to be honest with you. Um, but... As I said from the beginning and as I've said to the police, and this is why it was agreed, that plaque had, was not to do with um, nothing to do with the actual campaign itself. This is about a man dying. OK, so and I know what you're saying, you know, because now there's going to be a hoo-ha about, oh, the plaque going up, this, that, it's going to sideline the whole, um, the whole uh, investigation. No, it's not because it's been quiet for months, which is as expected. Um, what, so what's, yeah. who's, who's, the memorial service is, is still going ahead. Who, who's going and what's going to happen? Well, there's, you know, as, as I said to the police, it's going to be dignified. Um, you know, we expect people to come down with some candles. It's like a remembrance. It's two years. It's an anniversary. And, and, and no, rightly so, people, the family haven't had any answers. So there's still that feeling of, of maybe anger with them. You know, of course, you would, you would feel exactly the same. Um, but, what I'm asking is people just come down to remember that a man died. A man, that a man and his community died in, in circumstances that we don't know yet. We've got no idea what happened. The family have got no idea what happened. So it will be obviously, um, you know, the community, people that, people that care about what, what went on. So, you know, and that, that somebody died. He, he was a father after all. Um, I, I wish you a, a peaceful memorial and I hope it all goes yeah. smoothly. You sound a bit doubtful there, Ian. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. No, not at all. It's interesting you interpret it as that because no, not at all. <laughs> OK. Put a scarf on, though, because you're losing your voice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Put a scarf on. Wrap up warm. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll speak soon. 03459 four double five five double five. No, 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 not, not doubtful at all. Just I genuinely, I just genuinely wish them a peaceful... Um, uh, service. It was, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I, I detected. I've spoken to Liberty several times before. And we've always gotten quite well. I detected a slight um, tone there, um, and maybe it's, I don't know why. Maybe it's because um, uh, that, you know she feels b- betrayed by the, the police and other things. But there was no. There's no. They've been on the defensive for two yeah, yeah, years, yeah. haven't they? I can understand that. I can understand that. But if you know, there was there was there was no snarkiness coming from me. It was a genuine. Uh... Also, a bit of besides it, a behind the scenes gossip. She slept through her alarm, so she's a bit on the back foot. Oh, liberty! Well, there you go. Uh, it might be that. In that case, then we'll let that one go. Um, Seven fifteen. Let's get the trav. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. It's slow into London from the Swakeley's roundabout in Uxbridge towards the North Circular at the Hanger Lane Gyratory. On the M25, it's slow anti-clockwise from Junction 24 for Potters Bar to 23 for South Mims. And the A1M is also very busy now from Junction 8 for Hitchin to 7 for Stevenage. On the M1, it's busy southbound between Junction 12 for Flittick and 11 for Dunstable. And in Dunstable itself, the 85 High Street North is quite busy around the junction for Church Street. On the train departure boards, the 720 service from Hartford North to Moorgate has been cancelled. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy, thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> 7 16, it's Wednesday, the 4th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20 year old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. And a convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. It was the war that changed the world forever. And now, through photos, archive films and sound recordings, you can discover how World War I made a difference to lives across the UK, including here in Beds, Hearts and Bucks. The initial trials for the first tank 
had taken place in secret at Hatfield, in Hatfield Park at the beginning of 1916. The World War I at Home interactive e-book. Amazing stories of the people and places closer to home. You can see on this memorial here, this, this, this is Memorial Hall, which was designed as a living memorial to the boys that died. But actually, it says 577. Find out how to download it for free at bbc.co.uk slash WW1. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three no. Counties Radio. Shuffles papers furiously. Luton residents have sprung to the defence of a local jazz club after its owner has announced it could close due to a noise abatement order. Justin Doherty was told his venue, the Bear Club, would receive an order to restrict the volume or time of the noise when he returns to the country from business. He said that although the order doesn't claim to shut down, he wouldn't be able to run a music venue within the new restrictions. Lee Sullivan attends the club regularly. Morning, Lee. Oh, hang on, where are you? There. Morning, Lee. Good morning. I am here. Uh, you are you are there. I am here, and um, and uh, he is she. So, uh, why are you supporting the club? Uh, it's very rare. Anyone who's lived in Luton for any time uh, will know that it's very rare to find a place like this in Luton, which has got fabulous music and a really good atmosphere. It's a lovely place where I, you know, when I visit it, you get people from all ages there you get little uh, parties of women can go there on their oh, own cheeky. They're, and they're all they're all enjoying well, yeah, no i'm, I'm clearly there you say you say fabulous musically <laughs> it's jazz how can that be fabulous jazz is one of the most uh, uh, culturally important pieces of, uh, don't, of, don't. Of, of music to come out of uh, out of western civilization oh, as gosh. you well know oh, Lee. well it's been great talking to you thanks bye we've got a <laughs> lunatic on the line for crying out loud um, how often do you go there? Uh, well, I've been there probably uh, just over half a dozen times in the last six months. It took me a while to, to realise the place was there. Mm. But uh, when we did find it was there, it's a great place to, uh, to go on a Friday or a Saturday night and, uh, and groove to uh, this insane <laughs> come music. On, come on, Daddy. Oh, groove to the insane music? Wow! You're well, hip to the you know, same. I know it may come as a sh- it may come as a shock to you, but there are there are some uh, there are some people out there that like this kind of stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Emerson's like you're being know. a very good sport. Um, is, is, is it near? Uh, I don't know this. I don't know where this club is. Is it? Uh, is, there, is there housing around it? Is it in a residential area? Well, that's the interesting thing about this. Um, it, where it is, it's Guildford Street, so it's right in the middle of uh, of the town, uh, but not in the uh, in the kind of um, the, the the part of the town where people cascade out vomiting into the uh, early hours of the morning. Um, it is off Guildford Street. It's at a place called Mill Yard, and that used to be, I believe, a bike, re- a motorbike repair yard. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting atmospheric building. There aren't... <laughs> I am amazed to find that there are people living in that area uh, because it really isn't a residential area. It's, mm. I, I understand that there are flats. Uh, we are finding out more and more as we go along, but there are flats, I believe, in some of the... Uh, the, uh, the commercial uh, buildings that are nearby. Um, and, but it's a mystery, really, to many people who visited it. To uh, 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 The noise level thing is, is really almost incomprehensible because, I can give you an example, we were sitting there listening to our daddy-o music, actually an interesting fusion of jazz and prog. Uh, <laughs> Go, man, Lee. You're fantastic. I love you. You're, you're our music correspondent for the rest of this series. Yes, go on. The, uh, the, uh, Theo Travis is his name. And he's an impeccable musician, a oh, yeah. brilliant saxophonist, uh, and his fabulous band, four-piece band. Um, uh, the example I want to give you is that we were sitting listening to this stuff. I was pretty much on top of some of the, the speakers there, and I could still hear, because there always is one person who will do this, uh, I could hear someone talking at the bar about 10 foot away. Oh. So, uh, you know, if you, if you can follow someone's conversation that's going on, you know, that close to you uh, whilst people are playing, somewhat rudely, I think, uh, but that's, okay. that's the level of volume we're talking about. We're not talking about rock band uh, mm. kind of volume here. So it's a mystery to me. I, I played in the band myself for 10 years, and we, we were much much louder and we used to play in places that had decibel counters and you know they would trip off if we got too loud yeah 
this is nothing like that level of, of sound. When, when Theo was playing, that. did he play any songs from the Soft Machine or Gong, or was he was he just doing his solo stuff? Did he did he play the Actually, Pothead he Pixie? He did some Wyatt stuff. He did some Robert Wyatt stuff. Yeah. See, now, yeah. now now we're now we're finding a common ground. A little bit of Wyatt. I'm in. I'm in. Is it Toy, well, I... is it Toya Wilcox that Robert Wyatt's married to? Uh, no, that is uh, Robert uh, Fripp. Fripp. That's Robert Fripp. That's the other one. There we go. You see. Now, now we're all, we're oh, almost really speaking speaking the same language. Putting me through my paces this morning. <laughs> listen, mate. I've got to work. You've got to work. I can <laughs> listen. I can kind of see both sides of the story. If I lived near a music venue that did not have a heritage that hadn't been there for thirty years, if you know, if I'd moved next to a music venue that had been there for thirty years, that's my choice to do that. If a new one springs up. I can understand why residents might be upset, but also I'm fully aware um, how important these small music venues are to new new acts, to old acts that are on their way down, to slightly more experimental acts that you, that wouldn't fill a small theatre. Um, and I'm also aware that a load of these clubs are closing down across the country, and it does seem that these places are actually quite valuable. I think they are, and and I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to be negative about the people that have complained because clearly they have their own uh, point of view. Um, what I would suggest is that the Luton Council should go and look at the petition that's up, uh, which is called Save the Bear. Um, uh, go and look at that, and look at the quality of the comments that are on it. There are pages and pages of really uh, positive comments about the venue. If Luton Council uh, really wants to show its metal, I think what it should do is is make this work. Don't just shut it down. Don't put the, the owner in a position where he can't afford to make it work. Make this work for the people of Luton. That's one of the things that a council should be encouraging. Well, here's the thing, Lee, because no, the, the, the order hasn't been issued yet, so no one knows exactly... <laughs> What the order requires. The order doesn't say you must shut down. It's it's imposing certain um, rules and, and, and restrictions. We don't know what those rules and restrictions are yet. And yet, Mr Doherty, the owner, has said, well, I can't work like this, I'm going to have to close. But he doesn't know what the council wants yet, does he? Uh, well, uh, I'm not in a position to know that. I don't know mm. the gentleman. I've, I've spoken to him once about his fantastic range of beers, which are all produced in microbreweries uh, across the land. Uh, you have Icelandic beer there, for God's sake. It's, oh, it's got to be. It's got to be kept going just for that. Oh, Lee. But, but but close <laughs> these sick places, for goodness' sake, with their their made up beer and their made up music, their atonal sax saxophone music. Listen, man, there's nothing wrong with atonal sax music. I've been <laughs> practicing it myself for years. <laughs> Lee, listen, I'm going to come round. We're going to roll a fat one, and we're going to fight this out like men. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Lee, uh, I really, listen, you've been a really good sport. I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, we, sh- we shall follow this story closely and see. It'll be interesting to see what the order actually says when it does get issued and to see, you know, if it can be made to work within that because, um, uh, you know, you've got to respect neighbours and also these places are really important. Lee, uh, really nice talking to you. Thank you, mate. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. There's a, there's a good sport. Uh, of course, it's Robert Fripp, uh, one of Britain's greatest guitarists. Is he British? I don't know. Uh, married to uh, Toya Wilcox. Uh, Robert Wyatt. Who is he married to, please, Catherine? Alfreda Benj. That name one more time. Alfreda Benj. There we go. You see? <laughs> deary, deary me. Oh, he was a nice bloke, wasn't he? Yeah. Let's, let's find an excuse to get Leon again so we can rib him about his awful taste in music, shall we? <laughs> prog jazz fusion. Now, I like a bit of prog. I'm a bit. I'm a fan of. I am a f- kind of a fan of Yes. Not a massive fan of Yes. Their album Close to the Edge, where side one is the 18 and a half minute masterpiece Close to the Edge. I mean, it really is. I don't know if I've got it on my iPod because I haven't got my computer with me. Uh, you know, Yes really are um, a, a wonderful band. So Prog is. Um, it's all right by you. Prog has its moments. Jazz. I mean, there's just there's no excuse for that nonsense. As my mum would say, it's just five people playing different songs at the same time. It's it's an awful. I wonder if I've got yes on my... Uh... That's a kind of way than the way my dad describes it. I can't say on air. Oh, it's... Uh, oh. It's Pinocchio doing something awful in a dustbin. Uh, uh, what, lying? Piddling? No. Oi! Yes, 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 yes. I haven't, I haven't got any yes with me, so you guys, uh, you guys are spared... Spared uh, yes. Well, so well done, you. Uh, any texts? Yeah. OK, go on, then. Yes. Yeah, know? man. Yes. Bewitched, says Snuffers, is my shameful music. I even went to see them at the Telly West Arena in Newcastle when they were supported by Daphne oh. and Celeste. Best night ever. I'll tell you about... Again, I haven't got my computer, so I'm looking for it. I won't have it. There's no way... Uh, no, it's not here. I'll tell, tell you a great song. 
other things she said, other things she said, coming through, through my head, head running through my head, running through my head. The oh, two, we both went for the high. The two Russian f- pretend lesbian sisters. They were gay for pay. Yeah, they were gay for pay. They, they, I remember that, um, people went to see them at Wembley Arena after. Their second song was good. They had another one that flopped. I don't know was what there it no was. There's no kissing in that. Wasn't it? That was produced by Buggles. Yeah. Wasn't it? Um, who's Buggles? Buggles was in Yes. Buggles was in like 80s Yes. Um, Trevor Horn. Gosh. Trevor Horn. Fitting, it, fittingly. There we go, you see. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Anything else? <laughs> Not really, no. Oh, okay. Well, fine. Um, Adrian's saying we should defend all live music, even if it is jazz, <laughs> which is hideous. The, uh, the, you're right. It breaks my heart when I say so the old Trout in Windsor was, um, it wasn't just for like when I grew up in Slough. Uh, it was like a really big, it was a small venue held, held I don't know, legally 300. I've been in there when the Pixies played their warm-up gig before Reading. Not before Reading, 500 were, were crammed into there easily. And it was an important gig on kind of that circuit that bands of a certain level would play. Who did I see there? I saw the, the Pixies, I saw the Rocking Birds, I saw that Petrol Emotion, which was the offshoot of, we were talking about them earlier for some unknown reason, the, with the Irish lad, we're having the same conversation. Oh, Fergal Sharkey. Fergal Sharkey, undertones. the undertones. The undertones, I saw... Um, oh, I saw Carter USM there. Wow. <laughs> I bet that was quiet. Danny, do you like Carter? I literally don't know who that is. I know, what? isn't it brilliant? I, I have no idea. The only living boy in New Cross. Come on, even I know that, and I was a square. Uh, is, is this real? He's like he's like 18 years old. He's never, of course he's never. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, it is um, uh, Carter, the Unstoppable Sex Machine Special. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 is slow southbound between Junction 12 for Flitwick and 11 for Dunstable. It's also very busy on the northwest, uh, in northwest London on the A40 Western Avenue heading from the Swakeley's roundabout in Uxbridge in towards the North Circular Road at the Hang Lane Gyratory. And the M25 itself is looking very slow between Junction 24 for Partis Bar and 23 for the A1M at South Mims. And looking at the train departure wards at the moment, there are no major delays showing up at the moment. Samantha Bruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy, thank you very much indeed. So... The rip-off, we will get onto this, the rip-off that is the dentist. It's like when you go to the opticians, you always need something. When you go, I went to the dentist and your teeth are fine. Probably need to see the hygienist. Oh, right, there's another 45 nicker out of my pocket, is it? Thanks, guys. So I had that yesterday. Still, my mouth still, still tastes like I've been licking a cat's backside. It's awful. The last three weeks, honestly, terrible. Um, and the taxi driver, he's driving an old woman home. She gives him the wrong address. She says, oh, no, sorry, it's not there when they arrive. It's, it's this address. They get to the second address. I'm so sorry, it's this. They get to the third address. He asks for an extra four quid. Well, there's a full worry. Oh, yeah, by the way, the old woman's got dementia, but... I mean, that's not his fault, nor his responsibility. I think he's absolutely right to ask for that cash. 03459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 7.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs, ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month, and a convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. Three Counties Sport. BBC Three Counties Radio. A much-needed win for Milton Keynes Dons last night as they beat Charlton 1-0 at Stadium MK. Dean Bowditch scored the only goal in the first half to leave the Dons still 20th in the Championship, but now four points clear of the relegation zone. Here's manager Carl Robinson. We should have had a convincing victory, a 3-4-0, mm. I think. That's not being disrespectful for the opposition. But when you create so many chances like we did... We need to take them. A um, nicely crafted goal as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, probably the hardest one we took. It was a uh, we <laughs> bought a lot of big risks today. In probably one of the biggest games I've had as manager. And um Yeah, they all paid off, thankfully. Manchester City are through to the knockout stage of the Champions League after a 3-1 win in Spain at Sevilla. Wayne Rooney scored the only goal as Manchester United beat CSKA Moscow 1-0 at Old Trafford to the delight of manager Louis van Gaal. Rooney with a header! Completely unmarked! 11 minutes left for play at Old Trafford. Wayne is Wayne and uh, he shall always contribute in, in a game. I'm very happy because <laughs> I put him again in the striker's position and then he scored. And it was a fantastic goal. 
Tonight, Arsenal visit Bayern Munich, Chelsea host Dynamo Kiev. Stevenage have confirmed that manager Teddy Sheringham won't be coming out of retirement to play in the Hearts Senior Cup at Welling Garden City tonight. The club say that the 49-year-old former England striker and his assistant Kevin Watson were both registered as a precaution. And in cricket, England took an early wicket on day four of the third and final test in Sharjah, but a short while ago, Pakistan were 198 for four. That's a lead of 126. England's players are wearing black armbands as a mark of respect to former player Tom Graveney, who died yesterday at the age of 88. BBC Three Counties News and Sports, the next full bulletin is at eight. This is Ian Lee on BBC Three Counties Radio. Easy Tigers, 03459 455 555 is the uh, telephone number if you want to give us a call. 81333. Start your text 3CR for crying out loud. What more do I have to tell you? What more do I have to tell you? I'm trying to... I haven't got my computer. I'm, I'm spent... Oh, I'm trying to get my computer to update the iTunes music. I started it at 6 o'clock last night and when I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning... It was still doing it. So I'm, I'm having to do everything from my iPod. And it's enough difficult. Hang on, bear with me. 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 Ah ha! I woke up this morning and everything was different. Something was strange in the air. I woke up this morning and everything was different. I knew that the ninjas had been there. Have some of that. Right, uh, 03459 455 505. Michelle's called in about the last story. Morning, Michelle. Good morning. What would you like to say? Um, well, I just wanted to say that obviously we've read... Um, I, I, sorry, I represent Luton Culture, who run the Hat Factory, which is oh, just okay. on the corner from the Bear. Yeah. Um, and we have read uh, a few um, articles on social media, um, putting a little bit of blame our way, but also, more importantly, that... People still think that we are part of the council, um, and from uh, we're not. We're an independent charity, and uh, we are fully supportive of the bear, um, as with all of the local businesses in that area. Um, and we just wanted to sort of put our voice forward to say that we are supporting the bear, um, and that you know we really hope that the council do see sense um, and allow the bear to stay open. Uh, we've worked very closely with them. They're very supportive of us. Um, and, you know, everyone in that area, uh, which we call the, the cultural quarter, um, are working together to make this a destination for people for Luton, to make yeah. it a better place. Um, and to see something that's so vibrant and well-attended and, and really well-supported um, being potentially closed down... Um, it's such a shame. A cu- um, couple of and, things. And not good for the area. Two things. We don't know... The, the council is saying, and the order hasn't been issued yet, so we're, everyone's jumping the gun ever so slightly. Yeah. Uh, the, the council say they are not closing it down. They are just imposing restrictions. Now, no one knows what those restrictions are going to be. So it will be interesting, and I don't know when, when it's going to be issued, but it'll be interesting to see what those restrictions are and whether the, um, uh, the, 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 the Bear Club can work around those restrictions... Um, and what you being? I mean, I was about. To, I, I was questioning whether you were actually getting snarkiness on Facebook. I get snarkiness on Facebook and Twitter. You, yeah. you, you, I mean, we all do. <laughs> we, we, we all do. It, and it, sometimes it hurts. But um, what? So what are they saying? That's that's that's. That, 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 how are they trying to make you two out to be rivals? Then I don't think that it's about rivalry because certainly we're not. And you know, competition is good. And actually, we complement each other. To be fair, because our offers are very different. Um, I think it's more that. 
you know, we are reading um, uh, constantly um, that looting, uh, you know, that our venues are the council, that we're still the council. And it's for us, you know, we just wanted to put across that we're not the council. Yes, we, we work, you know, we work closely with the council and, and we are reliant for some of our funding from them. But we do have to generate, as a charity, we do have to generate our own revenue to sustain our buildings. Um, and certainly the hat factory, you know, it, it has lots and lots of businesses. Um, that work very closely within that area. So it's really, you know, the, the two messages from, from myself is that Luton Culture isn't the council, and we work very closely and in partnership, but we also work in partnership with lots of other um, companies and charities, um, and that we are really fully supporting the bear, um, and that we hope this does get resolved. Michelle, you'd, ha- you, you'd have to admit, though, surely, is a, you sound like a very sensible young woman. Jazz is awful, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we've clarified that. I appreciate your call. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank Bye. you very much indeed. Ta-ta. There we go, you see. And I know we're saying no shame. It's no shame music day today, Justin, but jazz. <laughs> Come on. What is your beef with the jazz? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's all great. scat. It's all jazz. Is, jazz is, a lot of it is scat. And you yeah. can interpret that how you want to interpret it. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, I mean, it really is. Guys, learn a, learn a tune and play it. Uh, but, <laughs> but here's the thing. All play the same tune, guys. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Aww. Groovy, man. Groovy. I think let, me just, let me stroke my beard and drink this real <laughs> ale. Huh? For goodness sakes. I'm, uh, I'm being slightly unfair, but there we go. Oh, a bit windy pops today. Uh, right, now, Justin, let me find yes. this story. The papers are all over the shop today. They came in late. There's a surprise. Where is it? It's in the sun. Where's my copy of the sun? Oh, there's the mirror. Hang on a minute, Justin. Be with you in a okay. minute. All right, boss. No worries. Where's my copy of the sun gone? Hang on, there's the express, the time. I popped it back into Kath. Oh, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. That's why I couldn't find it. You had it. There we go. Cheers, my dears. Thank you very much. Right, so this story, okay? And I think I'm a lone voice here, and I don't know why. It seems obvious to me. A call- Bearing in mind, we're only getting one side of the story, okay? Yep. Um, a callous cabbie demanded extra cash. Uh, okay, I tell you news, I'm going to read the story um, and take out a couple of words, then I'll read it as it's written, okay? Because then it becomes okay. a different thing. A callous cabbie demanded extra cash from a woman who directed him to her two previous addresses. Joyce Gibson um, sent him on two, to two separate addresses before realising her mistake and then on the third attempt got to the, the real address. Uh, the driver, when the driver finally arrived at her Leicester home, he insisted she give him £4 for the detours. Now, a story like that, well, he's perfectly within his rights. Yep. The way it's written... A callous cabbie demanded extra cash <laughs> from a dementia patient who directed him to her two previous addresses. Widow, irrelevant, Joyce Gibson, 79, got confused on her way back to her sheltered housing from hospital. Joyce's granddaughter, uh, Rachel Gibson, said... Uh, the he, sorry, the driver told Joyce's granddaughter, Rachel Gibson, people like her should not be allowed out. The driver left only when a tearful Rachel called his boss. Now, now, right... He makes a good point. I think he's tight. He makes a good point. If she's confused and yep. can't... If she is, is, is so ill, she is unable to give accurate directions to a cabbie or an accurate address, she shouldn't be allowed out on her own. That's a fact. You don't know the level of her dementia. Well, I mean, it was, it, she couldn't arguably get the, the hospital right. shouldn't have let her well, go well, if she was that... Whoever's fault, whoever, whether the hospital or her granddaughter, she should not have been out on her own. She's, they're lucky she got it right third time. Could, but, could have been there all night. And also, you, you say tight, he's a, he's a mini cab driver in Leicester. Do you know what I mean? He ain't rake, he's not a black cab driver we've with a got, swimming pool. We've all got or had grand. Yeah, exactly. Four quid he is kind. a lot of money. Four, he, four he quid, d- d- when times are tough, Justin, four quid yep. is a lot of money to someone like well, this. Yeah, he is a business, but, but the key for, for, to this story for me yep. is he picked her up from hospital. So yep. anybody, whether you've got dementia, you know, if you come out of hospital, the chances are, I was in hospital last week, I came yeah. out, I was slightly confused. I'm in my 30s, so everybody can get slightly confused when they come out of hospital. Right. Surely that's got to be taken into consideration. Well, and you, know, you, can either, hang on. you can either take it into consideration by mm. saying, I ain't going to pick up someone from hospital because it's not mm. worth the risk, or yep. I'm going to whack an extra £5 surcharge on all hospital pickups. Mm. 
Well, he was just going, obviously, by the uh, by the fare because she got confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, he's you, got you paid for the petrol. He's got paid for yeah, the petrol. No, he's a business. Now, you said you thought you'd be a lone voice here. Yeah. Um, I've taken this one to the streets. A um, couple of interesting opinions. And at the end, a taxi driver as well. Oh, well done. Here's what people had to say about this story. Well, at the end of the day, it's a business. So yeah. I think, you know, um, she doesn't really know where she's going. Um, you've got to pay the cost. I mean, I can't exactly say, oh, can I go to uh, Milton Keynes? Um, and then go back to Bedford. You know, you, you've got to, um, you, you know, you've got to pay the price. You know? So if you were, were driving that taxi, you wouldn't feel guilty for, for charging the extra money, despite the fact she's got dementia and she got confused. You, you wouldn't feel guilty for doing that? Uh, not really, no. I think it's hard because, like, obviously, he's got a business to run, mm. but obviously I think he should have taken into consideration the illness that she had. Mm. Um, but it's a hard one. I don't think... If you, if you were a taxi driver, what would you do? Would you charge the extra? I would have used a little bit of uh, common sense, really, to be fair. For a company, what's £4? That's how, I, that's how I see it. So you're a taxi driver, and if somebody got in your car and they were confused and they didn't, didn't know the way, so the fare was, was more, would you still charge them full rate? No, no, no. Because I, I don't do that. Because I'm a very old taxi driver. <laughs> I'm 32 years in taxi. So, so it's a bit of common sense from your point yeah, of view. Yeah, if somebody got confused, you pick yeah, them up yeah, from the hospital, yeah, yeah. you wouldn't charge them the extra? No, no good. No extra charge. But that's still your petrol though, isn't it? And you're a business at the end of the day. No, no, it doesn't matter because you respect the customer. You're a good guy, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go. There you go. The, th the, the other fellow saying, well, it's, it's, it's four quid to a business. Yeah, it's not a lot, but four quid to a driver who's, pay who's paying for his, um, who's mm. got to pay his petrol and got to feed his yeah. kids and got to pay uh, his rent. Yes, yeah, four quid. That, it's four if quid. If two or three times a day, of course, yeah. he would be uh, well short, yeah. I, th I think that this gentleman is, um, is, is completely, completely within his rights. Justin, thank you. We'll come up with something for the last hour, I'm sure. Thank you. Speak a little bit. Ta-ta. 03459 455 555. Is it the, the family might not have known she was coming out of hospital. I'm not blaming She might the, have done one. I'm not blaming the family. Well, a lot of people are. Phil is. Oh, go on, um, Phil. He says, I'd be Why can't I see the texts and you can? I don't know. I can't see any of the texts. I'm going to close the phone box and then open it up again. There is, I'll tell you a bit. Go on. If I was the family of the lady in the cab, I'd be embarrassed I wasn't taking proper care of her and keep my mouth shut, says Phil. He also agrees that jazz is rubbish, but I'll defend the, to the death a man's right to play it. <laughs> it's just, I can't see any of the texts. OK. Is there a reason for that? Probably, yeah. Have you banned everybody? No, not everybody. OK, I can't see any of the texts that you just read. Okay. The, lo the last thing I've got is... It, something might, that, uh, it might not be... Um, let's sort this out off air, shall we? Well, OK then, but you can, you can sort it out, can you? Possibly. OK, well, let's, um, let's see. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. It's very busy on the M1 southbound between Junction 12 for Flitwick and Junction 11 for Dunstable at the moment. And on the M25, it's busy anti-clockwise from Junction 21 for the M1 towards Junction 16 for the M40. And the A40 into London is very slow, although from the M40 at the Denham roundabout now to the Gypsy Corner in Acton. On the A1, it's slow southbound approaching the Black Cat roundabout from the St. Neots Junction on the speed sensors. But looking at the train departure boards, there are no major delays showing up at the moment. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties radio oh this bloody studio does my head in can someone is there somebody in the office who can work phone box and can activate it so i can see the texts please for crying out loud Right, where are we? 7.45. It's Wednesday the 4th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. Let's get the weather. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
It's a rather damp start across all three counties. There's rain around weather watch. A plain man in High Wycombe reports some drizzly, misty conditions as well. Now, this mist gradually starting to lift. The rain, however, unfortunately, that's going to be with us for a while. Some heavy, heavy outbursts of outbursts, outbreaks of showery rain moving across the counties as we head through the course of the day and through the afternoon as well. We may get a little bit of brighter weather later on this afternoon, maybe between the showers. Maximum temperatures still mild at around 14 Celsius. Overnight tonight, still the cloud and still the showers. Another band moving through, not quite as frequent as today's, uh, but still showers nonetheless. Dry through the middle part of the night, but if the cloud clears, which it could, we may get a bit of mist developing as well. Minimum temperature down to 10 Celsius. For tomorrow, starting off reasonably dry, but then some showery may moving in and coming more persistent through tomorrow afternoon. Maximum temperature 15 Celsius for Thursday. That's your forecast. Every weekday from three. It's not just about what we bring you. Starting off on the M25, it's particularly heavy moving anti-clockwise. It's also about what you bring us. In the end, I could only eat off my ironing board. Your stories. Every room in the house was just... I was climbing over mountains of rubbish. Your humour. There's a reason why you earn the big bucks, you see. That sort of insightful comment is exactly right. Your opinions. Well, the culture's got to change because the police can't do it and the, uh, the traffic wardens are so busy. So the culture has to change. I think parents do change into uh, different human beings when they are picking their kids up. Roberto Peroni. And everyone across beds, hearts and bucks. Weekdays from three on BBC Three Counties Radio. 03459 four double five five double five is the telephone number. I wouldn't bother with the taxis because the machine is working when it wants to work and then working when it don't want to work, so I wouldn't bother with the taxis. The piece of rubbish. The st- phone is up. Stupid phone box system those idiots installed that does not work. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Really great for a phoning show. Really appreciate it. Uh, right, where are we going here? Oh, let's have a look. It would seem that mums are constantly bombarded with messages about the benefits of breastfeeding. The government has been stressing the benefits again after a poll they conducted showed some mums feel embarrassed or uncomfortable about breastfeeding in public. The survey has been highlighted by a number of public organisations, including Hertfordshire County Council and the Royal College of Nurses. Man, don't get me started on the breastfeeding fascists. Oh, man, my wife was bullied by those people mercilessly. Janet File is from the RCN and joins me now. Morning, Janet. Morning. I'm not from the RCN. I'm from the Royal College of Midwives. OK, thank you very much indeed. Well, I'm glad, mm-hmm. uh, typical of, of uh, people here getting labels wrong, so I apologise for that. That's um, quite all right. Why do women need to be constantly reminded about the benefits of breastfeeding? I don't think women are constantly reminded about the benefits of breastfeeding. Most parents, most women know how they want to breastfeed, how they want to feed their children. Some choose to breastfeed, others choose to bottle feed. But the society and the public bodies that provide services for us all do not always make it possible for women to breastfeed when they're out and about. Who, who, who makes it impossible for women to breastfeed when they're the out public, and about? The public, I think. Our society has issues around the breasts and they probably don't see it as uh, 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 something that women, that, that women use their breasts to, to feed their children. Women might go into a sports shop and somebody will be looking at her or somebody would say, could you move? Or somebody would say, please don't do that here. Whereas in other countries, breastfeeding a child is as normal as anything else that we do when we're out and about. Yeah, it's the debate. This debate's been going on for ages, though. It's, you know, there, there are going to be people that, that think it's all right and people that don't think it's all right. But it's not up to them to think it's all right. Well, no, whoa, 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 no. It, it's up to them to make their own decisions. You know, you may disagree with that. It's not up to you to tell them that they're right or wrong. People make their own decisions. Yes, but if you're providing a service to the public and a woman goes to a cafe or a library or a sports shop, you can't tell her not to breastfeed there because the Equalities Act forbids people to discriminate against women. Is, is telling someone not to feed... Who, who feeds their baby in a sports shop? Sorry? Who feeds their baby in a sports shop? Parents, women. If they, they go out and about when they have children, it doesn't mean they're confined at home. It means they go out and about. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a dad. I'm a dad. I've got two kids. I know it doesn't mean that they're confined at home. Of course not. Right, yes. So, yes, who feeds a baby in a sports shop? A mother. Who, who goes to buy a pair of trainers or sports gear? Okay. And the baby wants to feed, so she sits down and feeds Yeah, but so, and some people don't like it. Well, they just have to deal with that, don't they? 
The people who don't like it have to deal with that, not the mother. Well, no, no, well, no, no. Yes. <laughs> Would you? Well, no. If I, I okay, I, okay. So there's there's a there's an old woman and she doesn't like someone breastfeeding. So what? I mean, she leaves the shop, not the woman who's breastfeeding. No, but why? Why does anyone have to leave the shop? Because the woman is protected under the. Equality yeah, but why does act. anyone have to leave? But you know, why does anyone have to leave the shop? Well, they move to another area if they don't like to see the woman breastfeeding. You see, let's come back to this idea about what our society think about women who breastfeed. What do, you, what do you think our society thinks about women who breastfeed? I think our society, some, not all, some people in our society think that women shouldn't breastfeed when they're right. out and about. Right. They do think that. Yeah, and, but, and they're allowed to think that. To protect women. No, but they're allowed to think that. Yes, they can. Yeah. But not act it out, not ask women to leave. OK. <laughs> I, I don't disagree with that. Mm. There's quite a lot of pressure on women to breastfeed, though, isn't there? When, when, when you know, when perhaps they don't want to or they can't. Well, um, I hear that quite a lot. Yeah, it's but, true. Um, but the issue around how a woman or parents decide to feed their their infants is one that only they can make. And I haven't come across people who persuade women to breastfeed against their wishes. I don't think that should happen, and I'm not sure that is happening. No, it does. You've not, you've not come across the breastfeeding fascists who, don't, who, who, who look down on some mums and make mums feel less than if they dare to use a bottle or formula. The disgust. Oh, for, oh it's awful. I have a lot of women. People. Well, you should talk to talk to some more mums because a lot of mums feel shameful mm-hmm. that they are unable to breastfeed for whatever reason, and yeah. they are made to feel less than by various organisations. That's a fact. Okay, it's a combination of factors. One of them we've been discussing uh, about the the guilt or shame women feel when they're in public or when they're out and about. That's one. Secondly, we've got um, uh, parental leave systems that don't. Uh, they don't chime with the fact that if you want women to to decide how to breastfeed or rear their children, give them some time off work. And um, you have society's ideas about what us in the society think that women should do around feeding their infants. So I'm not sure that there's a breastfeeding mafia because it's an act. No, there is, there is, there is, there well, is. You're in denial because I've met them, I've dealt with them, I've seen them, I've seen them bully my wife, I've had examples of them bullying other people. It okay. happens. That's absolutely fine, but I Thank am you. not in denial about anything. You are a little I'm, bit. No, no, I'm not in denial. I'm very pro-choice. Women can choose to bottle feed their babies. You're just saying that that the mafia doesn't exist. I've met them. I've had dealings with them. They made us offers that we could refuse. What the Royal College of Midwives advise midwives to do? It advises midwives to promote choice among women and to not once. Here's the thing, right? It wasn't until months after my wife was was battered and broken because our Mm -hmm. oldest wouldn't wouldn't um, uh, feed that one of the midwives said, "Well, why don't you just use a bottle?" No one had suggested it. We had an African midwife who Mm. grabbed my wife's breast and said, "This is the African way," and shoved it in the baby's (laughs) mouth. Do you know what I mean? They were they they made her feel less. Some of them, some of them were great, and the one that that a few months down the line said, "You could use a bottle," you know. Uh, But but there were some that that were really dismissed and hurtful. Well, I get, I, I totally understand and I agree that people should not, those who care for women with children should not force them to do uh, things that they do not wish to do. But I'm going to come back to this business of choice that um, when a woman decides she wants to bottle feed or breastfeeding, that should be her decision and the decision that they as parents have made. And people should not force them to do what they do not want to do. And I'm sorry to hear about your wife's experience, but you can't force, because a, a breastfeeding is it's a, it's, a, it's a selfless act that a woman chooses to do for her child. If she doesn't want to do it, that is entirely her decision. But the, the alternatives are not always presented. I think the alternatives are presented. I'm trying... No, they're not. To, then they yeah. might, they, you might present them, and that's great. That's wonderful. It took months for the alternatives to be presented to us. Okay. And when you're new parents, yeah. uh, you, you, you kind of do pretty much as you're told. And it Absolutely. took a long time for the alternatives to be presented. I get you. I get you totally. The alternatives should be presented. They should be, correct. if you correct. look at the, our publication, it talks very clearly about the support that we should give women, regardless of what, how they've chosen to feed their babies. And last year, we did some work around postnatal care. 
And time and time again, women come up with the same issues that they haven't been supported. So we support women regardless of whether they want to bottle feed their babies or breastfeed their babies. And I think you've raised an important issue that those women listening to your program would know that first we would say that breastfeeding is best. And it is best in terms of the fact that it lays down a significant health gain for the individual later on. But women who are bottle feeding their babies should not feel guilty because the baby. Well, those, those, those. Sick. I thought those findings had been um, disputed in in the most recent study that that that, that, that mm-hmm. said that, ne- that there was no evidence that um, breastfeeding uh, it set you up better for life. And so there was it was an intelligent study, wasn't it? They originally said that breastfeeding ki- kids who were breastfed were more mm-hmm. intelligent, and then a study came out, I think, a couple of weeks ago, that actually dismissed that and said that there was no evidence. Mm-hmm. And also, just because you're bottle feeding doesn't mean it's breast. It, it's not breast milk. There's all these different alternatives yes, that, that you, uh, you know, need to be presented. I agree with you, and I agree that alternatives have to be presented and that we, may need, we need to discuss all these all issues, all, all forms of infant feeding with women beforehand. And there are some women, you're absolutely right, that may not want to physically breastfeed a child but might want to um, express the milk and give Get to the, the child. Get the pumps going, isn't it? Let's go back to the um, to the business about the research and the intelligence. It, that wasn't what I was focusing on. I was focusing okay. on breast milk as nutrition for the okay. child. Okay. Well, listen, so listen. The, again, the again, there's an element. There's, you know, again, there's kind of an element of shaming there because there are some mums that are unable to express for whatever reason, yes, and you're now making them feel less than. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I am. I am saying I'm presenting to you something that you probably don't want me to say. I cannot come on your program and say to women, that um, to mothers that oh, the only thing you can do is bottle feed your baby. No, I'm not well, saying that. Well, why I'm would saying you ask you to, to say make that? A choice. Okay, I'm excellent. Going we're going we're to end it there, Janet. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. For that, 03459 four double five five double five. Although I don't want any calls about breastfeeding for crying out loud. What do you think we are, LBC or something? Blimey. Never come across the breastfeeding mafia? Wowzers, you're, you're a lucky one. I have, I escaped. For they, I felt the urge to lie to the midwife. I mean, I wonder whether that's happening more seriously. and more. People feel so ashamed they tell fibs. This is the African way. Grab, push. It didn't work. Didn't I, work. I had my baby taken off me. The uh, English way, apparently, yeah, with someone man. who didn't uh, ask me first. That was pretty uh, harrowing. Ah, right, let's have some of this. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the A40 into London, it's slow from the M40 at the Denham roundabout towards Gypsy Corner in Acton. And the M25 is very slow anti-clockwise from Junction 21 for the M1 to 15 for the M4. On the M1, there's Q southbound from Junction 12 for Flittick to 11 for Dunstable. And it's also very busy past Junction 10 for Luton Airport at the moment. On the trains, there's a replacement bus running on London Midland services between Watford Junction and St Albans because of a problem with the train earlier. Samantha Braff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy, thank you very much indeed. Uh, so we're still talking about the cabbie who um, dropped off an old woman, took her to one address, wrong address, took her to a second address, wrong address, took her to a third address. Oh, finally, we're home. He asked for an extra four quid. And, um, well, her family are upset by it. Yes, she's got dementia, but that's not his problem. Who's going to pay for his petrol? Music you're ashamed of? Oh, and other bits and pieces. Oh, three, four, five, no calls on breastfeeding. No calls on breastfeeding. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's eight o'clock. I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines man due in court charged with St Albans murder. Police block memorial plaque to Leon Briggs at Luton Police Station and rare Disney film discovered in Hertfordshire. BBC Three Counties Radio. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. Emile died in hospital after an incident in the city centre in the early hours of Saturday, October the 24th. 26-year-old Paul Crosby from Camden is due at Hatfield Remand Court. Ten other people People arrested in connection with the inquiry remain on police bail. 
Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. It was due to be unveiled outside Luton Police Station tonight. The force says it's seeking legal advice on implications a plaque may have for any future proceedings, with six officers currently suspended while an IPCC investigation continues. Liberty Louise is from the Justice for Leon campaign group. This plaque had nothing to do with the investigation. It wasn't saying, it wasn't trying to say this is going up because the police are at fault or they're guilty. It was completely separate from the investigation. This was something for the family to have to go, like they had the memorial site that was dignified. You know, it didn't take up a whole wall. It was a plaque. A convicted rapist has been detained by police after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. 58-year-old Malcolm Millman went missing during a visit to a monastery near Hemel Hempstead. Thames Valley Police say he was detained in Blackpool at around 8.30 last night under the Mental Health Act. Plans requiring internet companies to store details of their customers' activities for a year are expected to be included in the government's new surveillance legislation, which will be published today. Today. Ministers say the authorities need to access online communications to tackle terrorism and other serious crime. The Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, is writing to junior doctors, setting out details of their proposed new contracts. He's announcing an 11% increase in basic pay, but there will be cuts to extra payments for working on social hours, leaving the overall pay bill unchanged. A film featuring Walt Disney's first animated character has been rediscovered in the British Film Institute archive at Berkhamsted in Hertfordshire, having been lost for almost 90 years. Sleigh Bells was produced in 1928 and features Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, who's said to be a prototype for Mickey Mouse. Justin Johnson is from the BFI. You see Oswald, who is the first cartoon character, really have personality. It's very physical comedy. Uh, It's much more inventive in terms of the way that that they use the character. This is right at the start of the real kind of golden age of animation. In sport, a vital win for Milton Keynes Dons last night as they beat Charlton 1 0 at Stadium MK. Carl Robinson's side are still 20th in the championship but are now four points clear of the relegation zone. Not winning here today. We would have obviously just left it a point outside. That okay, wouldn't have dropped into it. Mm. So we would have took the positives out of it, obviously. But going again at the weekend, you could have ended up going to the international break in that bottom three. And it's important we just keep our distance away from it for the time being. The weather cloudy and wet this morning, some sunny intervals later this afternoon, a maximum temperature 13 degrees Celsius, and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Precautious should be, I can't even say it, precautious should be a word, but it is. So whoever wrote that for the, for the next bit, thank you guys. Precautious. Okay, I mean, it's one of those words that sounds like a word, but when you analyse it, it ain't. Morning, guys. Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. It's funny, Simon mentioned in Disney, um, um, uh, there's a... Hang on a minute, let me, let me do this, hang on. Across beds, That's hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Uh, there's a story in one of the papers about Disney. Right. Mickey Mouse fans, mm-hmm. Hiwai Wen and his wife, Panamea, have visited Disneyland... 1,100 times in nine years. They must be tired. In, no? Ho- in Hong Kong, Japan, France, and indeed the United States thereof. Nine, 1,100 times. That's like twice a day. Hmm? In nine, 11... Now, I was thinking about Disney last night because we got Netflix, so we got all the rubbish Disney films. And the majority of Disney, the majority of Disney, I'm going to say 98% of Disney... Is cack. Utter cack. We were watching this thing last night, right? With the, it's for babies, really. I don't know why the boys were watching it. I was, uh, said, uh, this, uh, and I've now, I've now got to the stage where if they're watching something that's rubbish, I say, this is rubbish. Mm. It's not rubbish. Wild Kratz. I beg your pardon? Wild Kratz. It's these two Australian fat old men. I think they're Australian. And they're like... They're out in like the, the like the, the jungle, right? And they're doing stuff. And then they turn into a cartoon where they're slim young men with special powers. Wow! <laughs> and it's all about. It's, it, do you know what? Actually, I learned something from it. You know, um, 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 geckos. Yes. Do you know how they how they stick to glass and stuff? You lick them. No, mate, you're not. Hey, Danny, it's good, Danny, Danny, do you know how geckos and salamanders and stuff stick to glass in it? You lick them. No. Little hooks. They got no, 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 no. Velcro. 
D- shut up. Uh, well, Blue. Velcro wouldn't work. That's little hot. They've got little um, little clumps of hair that fire out electric charges. Oh, shut up. Wow. I swear to God, the Wildcrats told me. They fire out... Uh, this is amazing. They fire out... So when, when they're stuck to the glass, electric charge. And they peel it off, no electric charge. Electric charge, no electric charge. So they do it. So they, they fire out little bursts of electricity. You learned it Fact, from a kid's show. I learned it from Wildcrats. It's still rubbish. Because then everyone shrank and they got put in a glass jar and they had to... Anyway, it's irrelevant. But we were watching this Disney thing, right? And it was like, it was like a computer game. It looked awful, and it's them dri- driving... The, it's not even Mickey Mouse's voice. Mickey Mouse one of the most annoying characters of all time. Uh, and they're driving around this sort of racetrack, going, Oh, look, there's a load of rubber duckies in the way. What are we going to do? Oh, I know what this is. Is this Mickey Mouse's clubhouse? No, 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 no. It's, it's Sub Club. It's, um... OK, guys, we've got to shout out for Toodle. OK, here we go. Let's all shout. On the count of three, we're all shout for Toodle. And my boy's going... Come on, Toodle! And it's just utter guff. Awful. And I think the majority of um, of Walt Disney stuff is rubbish. You know, the thing is, though, when we were kids, they didn't have any competition, did they? Now they do. <laughs> well, Disney lost it in, towards in, in the 70s, and they started doing stuff like The Black Cauldron. Um, and they did. They tried to do a Star Wars spin-off that they, they um, spent all their money on. Uh, and they, went, they almost went bust as a result of it. It was... Um, was it the black hole? It might have been the black hole that was like that was Disney trying to do Star Wars, uh, but I mean most of their stuff is. Name one good Disney film. Parent Trap. From the last thirty years, and Parent Trap is rubbish, by the way. No, it's not. It is awful. You only said that because you're a girl. Um, Toy Story. That's Pixar. That's Disney part. Pixar. Disney yeah. bought Pixar. Disney bought Pixar. Okay. So that's Pixar. That's not Disney. The oh, Avengers. Mary Poppins. From the last thirty years. All right. Not the remake of Mary Poppins, um, uh, where uh, I saving think, Tom Hanks. I think she's being um, played. No, she's being in the new, the new Mary Poppins. Isn't she being played by Mary J. Blige? Is that what's happening? Really? I think so. I think so. Okay, new, or Lisa new Disney. Left Eye Lopez. I'm not sure. Won't be a oh. You can't think Disney in the last thirty years. All right, I'll make it easier. Good Disney in the last forty years. You can't do it. You can't do it. Poppins is great, right? I'll have that one, but that's old. You can't do it. But no, they oh, bought oh, things. Oh, 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 oh. They bought Tangled. Star Wars. Tangled. Pixar. Frozen. It's Disney, though. Pixar. No, Frozen isn't Pixar. I might give you Frozen. Oh, oh you I've found won. the chink in his armour. I don't think you can say that anymore. I might give you Frozen, but uh, hang on a minute. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. While I'm talking to my next guest about slightly more serious issues, can you Google who made Frozen? Because I bet it was outsourced and they just whacked that blooming castle at the front of it. 03459 four double five five double five is the telephone number. Now, the Justice for Leon campaign say they feel badly let down by Bedfordshire Police after being told they won't be able to erect a memorial outside Luton Police Station. Leon Briggs died in police custody after being um, detained under the Mental Health Act two years ago today. Well, the brass plaque was due to be put outside Luton Police Station to mark the anniversary. Alex Radley is a criminal lawyer with Luton-based Noble Solicitors, also used to work for the police. Uh, Morning, Alex. Morning, Ian. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. We've heard that um, after a couple of changes to the plaque, the police were okay for having this put up. Now they're saying they don't want it put up. Do we, do, do we know why? Are they being overly cautious? Are they afraid? Why would they do that? I think when you're preparing a case for anybody um, in terms of being a lawyer, advising your client, um, you're particularly um, cautious about any information that's coming forward because you don't know upon what way it's going to be used. Mm. Now, as far as Leon's case is concerned, I'm not instructed. I don't know anything about it. Uh, But in terms of um, normal proceedings and preparation for trials, um, obviously lawyers are very edgy about these sorts of things. And no doubt a client takes the advice of their lawyer most of the time. What, because the, the original, I can understand why the original wording of, of, of the plaque could be seen as contentious. They had no justice, no peace, which which could be argued, I, I, I imagine, by some quarters as, as almost being a call to arms, the, you know, the call for no peace. The wording as yeah. it stood, though, after the, all those those things have been taken out, RIP Leon Briggs, 4th November 2013. There's nothing there. That, and again, I'm aware that, you know, th- this isn't your case and stuff. I'm just kind of picking your brains. There's nothing there that could be uh, inflammatory or accusatory or, or, or could be detrimental to future proceedings. It's fact. I think the way that I personally would deal with it, if I had a client in that type of situation, 
is um, try to bring the parties together, try to mediate the situation, which would try and get it outside the proceedings that are being investigated. Uh, that's easier said than done um, because, uh, you know, people won't want meetings necessarily mm. um, if if there's a case being prepared for uh, for trial or, or investigation. Um, but I think that that would be my approach first and foremost, and then perhaps uh, get together some agreement as to why it, uh, it, that this is an isolated issue and nothing to do with the trial. Mm. Um, perhaps put it down, get it into agreement um, in early stages. But no doubt in situations I've dealt with previously for things like road accidents where there's been a fatality and uh, you know people want to uh, deal with things like uh, flowers on the side of the road mm. and things like that, the, the police have accommodated that. Uh, so I don't know, you know, as I said, I repeat, I don't know about Leon's case. No. So I don't know why they particularly wouldn't hear. Here's a question you may not know the answer to, um, but I'm going to ask it anyway, just because it pops into my head. I wonder how usual it is to have plaques outside um, or, or on or part of police stations. I know, you know, masses of people don't die in police custody. Unfortunately, you know, a, a few no. do. And I wonder if there is any precedent for this, if there are any other plaques on uh, that was part of the police building for people who've died in police custody. Well, the, the ones I've seen are really old. I haven't seen um, particularly new plaques in relation to this. Mm. It's just my, you know, um, straw poll yeah. experiences of going to different police stations when I've seen the old ones. Uh, but nothing new, um, and obviously I don't know if they own if the police own the building mm. and whether that's an impact. So you know there are obviously steps to go through if you want to put plaques on public buildings um, in relation to planning and things of that nature. Again, I don't know if um, sizes of plaques have been agreed and all of those sorts mm. of uh, questions. So there's a, there's quite a lot to it really. Mm. I mean, on the face of it, um, can we put this here? yes or no, uh, can turn into a, a real difficulty. You know, have you got the planning? Have you got permission to do it? Um, how, how many people does it impact upon? What's going to be the impression of the public coming to the police station? Um, it, so there's lots of different um, factors uh, that come into making this sort of decision. All right, listen, I really appreciate you kind of um, going through that with me, Alex. Uh, I mean, neither of us kind of know exactly the full details, but it's good just to pick your brains. Alex Radley, criminal lawyer with Luton-based Noble Solicitors. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, it's, it's all kicking off on uh, Twitter. Uh, Menaz says, my daughter Alicia is gasping at the outrageous words coming out of your mouth. Hashtag Disney rocks. Mm. And Jenna says, and, and quite rightly so, Jenna, I appreciate this. I'm going to take this as the compliment I'm sure it's intended as. The Ian Lee Show, where opinions are fact. Who made Frozen? Disney. OK, so they've, they've done one good film in the last 40 years. Good for Enchanted. them. Enchanted. Rubbish. Oh, no, come on, Which that's a good Enchanted? film. Enchanted? Enchanted's the one where she starts off as a cartoon and she becomes a real-life person in New York. Is that proper Disney, though? Yeah. All right, I'll give you that. That's a good film. All right, so they've done two good films in the last 40 40- Enchanted was like 10 years ago. Right. Right, Frozen Tangled. Was, Tangled's all right. Hit and miss. Ting, Tangled was great before we saw Frozen. We've been spoiled by Frozen. Tangled, yeah, well, the, yeah, Tangled's hit and miss. A lot of the old Disney cartoons, you can still see the pencil mark. Yeah. Well, they did them in different styles. I didn't realise till I was a grown-up and I was looking at them. But, you know, like the Jungle Book is kind of jazzy and snazzy and it moves towards the so- Aristocats, which is all like really scribbling. You know the Aristocats, right? T- is it, they last about 80 minutes, those films. They couldn't even do a full feature length. Unbelievably slack. Um, about ten minutes of that is good. Uh, the, the other, I think uh, it's cack that one. Yeah, the other, the low, it's, it's jazz. It's a, it's a, it's a jazz movie. I don't want my kids to sit there and watch, learn about jazz. There's all these hep cats off their face on goofballs, goofballs and whack balls and all these things. It's a load of nonsense. Mm. Terrible film. Terrible mm. songs. Terrible message. Awful. But that's what was going on in films those day. In those days, you had Audrey Hepburn strutting around in her little one piece. The only good bit in the Jungle Book is when the Beatles pop up. 
<laughs> the, Be- the Beatles are good. It's the same people, I think. At least one of them is the same people that did the voices of the Beatles in the Beatles cartoon. Have you ever seen the Beatles cartoon? No. Oh, it's brilliant. It's an American cartoon from about 1965. It's brilliant, right? But they all talk like that, do oh, they? Oh, hello, John. What are you doing today, then? Oh, Ringo, well, today I thought I was going to look into a hole. And then Nowhere Man starts playing. It's, I mean, it's, it's rubbish, but it's brilliant. 03459 four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1 northbound, there's been an accident between Junction 11 for Dunstable and 12 for Flitig, so a lane's been blocked northbound and it's causing queues because of an accident made worse by the fact it's in the roadworks area. On the M25, it's basically the usual anti-clockwise between Junction 22 for St Albans and 21A for the M1 south. And it's also slow on the A1M southbound between Junction 3 for St Albans and 2 for Wellham Green. The A10's busy southbound between the M25 at Junction 25 for Enfield and Lower Edmonton through the roadworks. And it's also slow on the a one 20 in Little Haddam in both directions at Albury Road. On the trains there's a replacement bus on London Midlands services between Watford Junction and St Albans because of a problem with the train earlier on. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Sammy. Someone suggested the new Cinderella. No, no, no. Tedious. 8.16, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emil Stapleton in St Albans last month. And a convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit. BBC Three Counties Radio. We all know that the weather can be sunny and bright in one place and just down the road it's blowing a gale. Which is where BBC Weather Watchers comes in. Your chance to join the nation's favourite conversation and share the weather where you are. A new website that lets you tell the nation and your neighbours exactly what's going on. Get digitally creative and build a unique record day by day. You'll hear the latest from Weather Watchers on BBC Three Counties Radio. And you may even see your picture at 6.30 on Look East on BBC One. To become a BBC Weather Watcher, simply sign in online at bbc.co.uk slash weatherwatchers. BBC Make It Digital. BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh, we can sign in online, can we? Hmm? Made up email accounts, can we? Hmm? Fake names, fake weather, can we? Oh, oh, oh. Um, Catherine, any texts? Uh, yes. Go on. Uh, Everyone wants to talk about Disney and banging on about Disney. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Mickey Mouse is a rubbish character. That's a fact, right? That's a fact. It's boring and tedious. Do people really love Mickey, though? No. No. Or is that just. Or oh, someone's saying Fantasia. Fantasia is a psychedelic nightmare. Disney dropped too much LSD and that fell out of his backside. Danny thought of a good one. Oh, go on, Dan, Dan. Pirates of the Caribbean. Rubbish. No. Oh, it's rubbish, no. mate. It's rubbish. No. It's rubbish. No. It's boring. It's, oh, Johnny Depp's doing, doing a drunk Keith that Richards. first one is great. First one's a bit of fun, I'll give you that. Yep. The, the, the next three, awful. Yeah, they, they stretched it. Awful. Didn't they? The first one, a little bit of fun, I'll give you the first that. First one, yep. Too long, though. Ah! Okay. The first one is too long. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank Lee, you, Danny. Lee B and Milton Keaton's one point. Morning all. Yes, Tangled. Tangled is brilliant. Made in 2010. I watched it earlier this year as a 28-year-old and loved it. It pokes fun at itself in a mature way, also with gags like when they make uh, the main character questions why everyone is, is breaking into song. Great stuff. But isn't it funny how... I used we... to love Tangled before I lent it to someone who never gave it back. Isn't it funny... OK, point taken. <laughs> Ignored. Overruled. Isn't it funny, one? though, that we're really struggling? Now, of course, there are a few exceptions. I, 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 was, I was using the, um, the uh, immovable point of saying they're all rubbish as a conversation starter, and it's got you talking, so I, I've, I've won. Um, there are a few exceptions, but we're really struggling. Disney, one of the biggest you know, movie companies in the world, we're really struggling to come up with anything decent they did in the last 40 years. Here's one that we're they're supposed They're living to... on their history. They're living on their well, history. And the history, I think, they, they were just clever marketeers. Because yep. Mouseketeers, I think we called them. We're all supposed to love things like Mickey Mouse, right? I'm not crazy about Mickey Mouse either. Herbie goes bananas. I don't really care about a car. I blew my boy's mind last night. Blew my boy's mind. Shall I say I did it? We sat there watching this rubbish Disney thing and I, and I remembered I could do this. <clears throat> but can you speak? No, I can't. My friend Katie used to be able to speak and it was brilliant. I can only do the... 
<laughs> didn't need words. The both the boy both the boys put the one one had a Star Wars comic and the other one was was being annoying and they both stopped and looked at me and went, Whoa. And just for a second I was cool again. Then they started messing around and getting right on my nerves. But but for a second I blew their flipping minds. James is in Bedford. Morning, James. Morning, sir. How are we? Yeah, I'm good, thank you very much. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. It's like a 12-step group for people who all their lives have had to pretend that Disney are good, and actually they're going, yeah, do you know what? I agree. Disney sucks. Joy, say it, James. No. Disney sucks. Yep. Have you had some kind of experience with Mickey Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the 70s, mate. We know what all those kids' entertainers got up to. Careful. I don't think you can libel a cartoon character, can uh, you? But Disney will um, sue. Disney, so. Disney will um, will uh, bring his head. Why, where does that myth come from that he's, his head is frozen in ice? Because that's a myth, right? That's a myth. The, the, but the, 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 he's cryogenically frozen. Mm. Where has that come from? That's an odd story to have about a man, isn't it? Yeah. James. Well, well I, I wouldn't be surprised if it came from your good self. Yeah, possibly. Oh, oh hang on a second. I see, yeah, I see what's going on there. Go on. Um, I want to mention Wreck It Ralph. I want to mention Tangled, obviously, both being made by Disney Animation Studios as opposed to Pixar. Wreck It Ralph, okay. You've, you've, no, 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 no. Yeah, how old are you, mate? 40, you're, you're about 44, I'm, yeah? I'm 32, still okay. 44. Okay, all right, but so you remember the 8 bit video games and you remember what it, the, the, what it was like to go into an arcade? I do. Yeah, of course, powerful, magical. That's not. Wreck It Ralph is not a kid's film, it's a dad's I'm film. Not a kid. No, 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 it, no, it, exactly. It's universal. But, no, 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 but no, no, but it's it's marketed as a kids' film. It's not a kids' film. Kids do not get any of the references in there at all. Kids it's don't know what an, the kids don't know what an arcade, <laughs> an arcade, a machine where you put money in and you can play games. Kids haven't got a clue. They don't know that Wreck It Ralph is based on um, uh, Jumpman, Jumpman from Mario. Yeah. Have you ever taken your kids to the seaside? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, bear, bear with me on this. Yes, I have. Try and get them past an arcade without them moaning at you to go in. Um, where, 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 hang on, what, what arcades are you going to? The, the ones in 1987? Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, and, I, and I, listen, I remember the thrill of the fair setting up on the, uh, the waste site at the back of the Britwell Estate, and I didn't want to go on the fairground rides. I wanted to go and, and, and get the 10 pence off my dad and how high can you try and play uh, D- Donkey Kong? He said, kill a gorilla there. There's a, a reference for people who have BBC Model Bs. Um, but it, it, the, Wreck It Ralph, I'm not going to allow either of those, James, and I'm cutting you off in case you have a, a stronger argument that I can't bat back. Well, it's it's, it's the, the, the prerogative of the, the phone-in host. It's not, it's not a, the thing I use very often, but I've cut him off. Um, I've cut you off, James. Is that all right? Uh, unfortunately not. Oh, this is okay. Uh, Wreck It Ralph is not a kids' film. It's not a kids' film. It's a grown-ups' film. Inside Out isn't really a exactly. Kids film. Inside it's Out a really is not, good one, though. Inside Out is not a kids' film. That's a, a, a psychiatrist's um, sex dream. Graham. <laughs> oh, he can speak. He can speak. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Do, are you crying I bet he can now? Burp the alphabet as well. Uh, uh, um, Ian, um, you, I was just going to say, like, um, you can't blame Disney for buying Pixar. Like, the Mini is a great car. BMW bought Minis and made it a better car. And also, uh, my if anything, daughter, if anything, uh, Disney made Pixar a worse company. No. Because Pixar no, lost no. its independence. It lost. All right, da- da- Danny, here we go. This is another job for you. Right. We've got, you, got, um, you can ask Jeeves. You've got um, uh, Alta ask Vista Jeeves. or something, right? Yeah, who? Find out the last film that Pixar made before they were bought by Disney, the first film that Pixar uh, made after they were bought out by Disney. All right? And we'll see. We'll see. I don't know what the answer is, Graham, but I bet you that the, one, uh, the last one they made independently is a darn sight better than the one they oh, made as under the umbrella. Uh, I don't know about that, but you've got to remember also, and you're 43. Disney films 40. Are eight, uh, whoa, whoa, well, dude, I'm 42. Um, oh, sorry, 42. Sorry. That's libelous, you're buddy. For children, they're not aimed at adults. In, that's, no, that's, they're not, and that's. There's references for when you're in the pictures, you can laugh along. And but that's. Generally, no, you're wrong. Children. I My wish Disney. My daughter is obsessed at the moment with Maleficent and Disney descendants. She's obsessed with them. And she's eight. I wish, I wish Disney films were aimed at kids, but they're not. They're all too postmodern. They're all turning to the camera and winking. That's for the mums and dads. Have a couple of gags in for the mums and dads. Inside Out, that's a film for people over the age of 35. 
<laughs> it is. Surely it's not. not. It's not kids. Not. My Surely my kids not. did not understand. I said, "Did you like Inside Out?" They said, "Yeah." I said, "What did you like about it?" It was very bright. They didn't have a clue <laughs> what was going on in there. Uh, that's a, that's an exception. I haven't seen it myself, but I've, I've heard about it. Oh, that's go and watch. Exception. Go and watch it. You'll like it because you're a grown up, Gray. But y- your kids won't get it. Your kids won't get it. How's that research coming on, um, Danny? Well, I think Cars was the last one they made before Disney took over. And that's got to be cack. That is pretty... Oh, mate, no, you're... Sh- Cars is cack! I've never seen it. No, it's brilliant. Seen, no. It's brilliant. But then they made Ratatouille, I think. That's a good film. Pretentious. No. no. Pretentious, yeah. slow, mm. thoughtful. Which I like in a film, but come on, Ratatouille, it's pretentious. No, it's not. Ratatouille. You're My joking. kids love that film. When they eat their dinner, they always close their eyes and make their head go around like when Ratatouille's tasting all the things. It's pretentious. They love it. It's trying to be cleverer than it actually is. Aren't we all? Disney buy things and make them good. All right, like Mar- Marvel. All right, Mark Zuckerberg. That's good. Oh, they totally destroyed Marvel no. if they bought it. I don't know if they have, but I'm, <laughs> yeah. I've taken this stance they, they, now, so I can't back down from they it. They bought it. And I'm made sorry, it your business. microphone stopped working. <laughs> Isn't that outrageous? Oh three four five nine. Four. And uh, her microphone stopped working as well. Are we not doing this next story? Or are we too busy um, arguing about um, uh, cars and Inside Out? The latter, yeah. Okay, for, no, fine. I can dig that. No, I'm, we will. We will do it. Well, let's do it after half past now. Yeah, let's. There's, there's, um, let's. There's no time. <clears throat> I blame James of Bedford. Why? What's he done? Phoned up. Yeah, causing trouble. Graham. C- c- causing trouble. Let's ban them for the rest of the morning. A distraction, aren't they? Let's ban them for the rest of the morning. 03459 455 555 is the telephone number. Hey. Oh, that was a good one. What? Oh. I was not, it's not a kid's oh. film. It's boring. No, oh no. It's, I, I, what, kids don't need to know about existentialism at the age of five. They want to know that car talk and go fast and do big jump. That's what kids want to know. That's what kids want to know. They don't want to know about that, you know, we're, that we're all going to die and that life is you don't finite. Need and you don't need They don't want to know about that rubbish, for crying out loud. Remind me, I want to do front page of the sun. Front page of the sun about credit card fraud. Go on. Credit, or credit firms slammed for fleecing the poor. 5.6 million Brits trapped in the... Cut up my credit card last week. Cut it up. I don't have a credit card, right? And um, JVS will be, will be turning in his, um, in his grave. Um, uh, and I don't, and I had to get a credit card because I wanted to hire a car abroad. And yeah. they said you've got to have a credit card. So I went in, applied for the, the, the credit card, and, the, the, and I used to have a credit card <clears throat> that had an overdraft of <clears throat> thirty-five thousand pounds. <laughs> they just kept, and that was back in the day when I didn't know how to work a credit card. And they just kept, I just kept getting a letter, and we've upped your your um, your overdraft, but your your limit by ten thousand pounds. Hey, hey. Um, and so I got a credit card. Uh, for this thing. And then I tried to get rid of this credit card. hard to get rid of a credit card. I phoned up the bank and said, right, I've got the credit. I want to get rid of it. Why? Don't want it. Why do you not want a credit I don't want it. Don't need it. Okay, so what can we do to, to make you stay with it? I said, I don't want a credit card. Blimey. It was 20 minutes on the phone of, of me saying, look, I'm go- I'm go- I've got the scissors. I'm going to cut it up. I don't want it. Well, sir, we'll be very sad to lose you. What, what could we do to persuade you? Nothing. I don't only buy stuff if I can afford it. That's the th- I know you get you know, like customer protection and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't but buy from Dodge Pots. Well. Don't buy from Dodge Pots. I buy from reputable if people. If I was buying something expensive, put it on the credit card, nah. pay it straight off. Nah. But again, go to the thing of, can you afford it? Then if you can't Always afford the, it, don't buy it. Yeah, this is the thing, right? Um, um, uh, the credit cards are the worst thing that's happened to, uh, the, the, to, to the universe. Because it's, there's a brilliant um, scene in, um, it's not Freaks and Geeks, it's the sequel to Freaks and Geeks. I can't remember what it's called. Where they're all basically staying at college. It's their first year at college. And one of them rushes in and says, guys, guys, they're giving out free money. And they all run down and it's a stall where you can sign up for a credit card, yeah. you know. And they all go nuts. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. And don't buy from Dodge Pots. But that's a really old-fashioned way of doing it these days. Everyone's in credit, aren't they? Everybody's in credit, apart from this guy. Apart from, of course, the, uh, the, 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 the hundreds of thousands of pounds I've got in my house. The more. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1, there's a lane blocked northbound between Junction 11 for Dunstable and 12 for Flitwick. It's in the roadworks areas that's making it very slow. On the southbound M1, it's very busy from Junction 6 for Watford towards uh, Junction 21A for St Albans. And also the M25 anti-clockwise exit slip road at Junction 21A for the M1 south is very, very slow at the moment on the approach from St Albans. On the M40 into London, it's very busy from the Denham roundabout towards the Swakeley's roundabout in Uxbridge. And on Amersham Road in Chalfonts, St Giles, it's very
very slow southbound between Coke's Lane and and Pheasant Hill. On the trains, London Midland have a replacement bus service running between Watford Junction and St Albans because of a problem with the train earlier on. Samantha Bruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much indeed. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8.30, I'm Simon Oxley. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emil Stapleton in St Albans last month. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony tonight marking two years since he died in police custody. A convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit over a week ago. And a film featuring Walt Disney's first animated character has been rediscovered in the British Film Institute archive at Berkhamsted in Hertfordshire, having been lost for almost 90 years. Three Counties Sport. BBC Three Counties Radio. And a much-needed win for Milton Keynes-Dons last night in the Championship. Grunners inside the area. Bowditch is there. Bowditch makes it 1-0 to MK Dons. Great move from the home side. It was Carruthers and Bowditch who combined. And MK Dons have taken the lead at home. Milton Keynes-Dons won. Charlton nil. And here's manager Carl Robinson. There was a little bit of nervous energy around the place, obviously. Yeah, but it takes us four points clear of the drop zone, which is a nice cushion to have. And I'd like to sustain that cushion now if we can move forward. It's a tremendous win for, for everyone involved. But like I say, all the players showed a tremendous attitude today and I can't ask any more from any one of them. Manchester City are through to the knockout stage of the Champions League after a 3-1 win in Spain at Sevilla. Wayne Rooney scored the only goal as Manchester United beat CSKA Moscow 1-0 at Old Trafford. Tonight, Arsenal visit Bayern Munich and Jose Mourinho is back under the spotlight as Chelsea host Dynamo Kiev. Here's former Chelsea defender Graham Lasso. All the evidence suggests that the situation is irretrievable. I think the game against Dynamo Kiev in the Champions Champions League. People talk about must-win games. Now, this is getting very close to a must-win game. Stevenage have confirmed that manager Teddy Sheringham won't be coming out of retirement to play in the Hearts Senior Cup at Welling Garden City tonight. The club say that the 49-year-old former England striker and his assistant Kevin Watson were both registered as a precaution. And in cricket, England took an early wicket on day four of the third and final test in Sharjah, but their chances of winning the match and squaring the series are slipping away. At lunch, Pakistan are 200 129 for four. That's a lead of 157. England's players are wearing black armbands as a mark of respect to former player Tom Graveney, who died yesterday at the age of 88. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin is at nine. One, two, three, and four more make seven. Six is afraid of seven, because seven ain't nine. Nine was minding his business, talking to ten about Gordy House clothes. Why seven, eight, nine, nobody knows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. What about nine? Seven, eight, nine. Oh, the cattle have to live with eight lives now. Ronaldo will have to make do. Ever since seven, eight, nine, seems I've got an extra finger and an extra toe, too. Seven, eight, nine. Once upon a time in our solar system, we couldn't make do without nine. But Pluto's not a planet now, so eight'll do fine. Oh, the cattle have to do with eight lives now. The Chinese will be out of luck. Vampires will have to think of some other method, because without their canines, how will they suck? Seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. What did he say? What? What did he say? I heard you say Easy Tiger. Yeah. But then, as I said Easy Tiger over that man's voice, it sounded like he was swearing. No. Let's try that again. Local and vocal across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Okay, this is my turn. 
A Luton Jazz Club is at the centre of a row over reasonable noise levels. The Bear Club is about to be issued with a noise abatement order. Owner Justin Doherty hasn't seen it yet, but he's expecting it to impose restrictions that will leave him unable to operate. Well, Beverly Whitrick runs the Music Venue Trust. Morning, Beverly. Good morning. Thank you for your uh, patience. Uh, loads. Of, this story, I think we're all jumping the gun slightly because no one's actually seen... The order. What are the kind of restrictions that councils could place on music venues? Well, a noise abatement order from a council basically is a legal notice that requires the person responsible to stop causing what they deem to be a nuisance. Mm. So a noise abatement order issued to a music venue tells them to stop playing the music. Well, now, does it tell them to stop playing the music or does it say stop playing the music after 11 o'clock or does it say you can play the music but it's got to below, be below these decibels? Well, that's a very interesting question and it does vary around the country. Um, I haven't seen the one in Luton. No, and no, so no one has yet know. and that's the problem, I think, yeah. But, but I do know that this particular club has a policy of not programming music post 11pm so I right. would be very surprised if the noise abatement notice is saying no live music after 11 because they don't. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a new club that has gained a very good reputation and is considered a very responsible club in, in most of the local community and they bring in fantastic artists for an early evening show up till 11pm, yeah. after which the bar may still be open, but there is no live music. Maybe, and maybe that's the... Um, again, the order hasn't been issued, and we really need to, 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 to see it, to see what this is. But, and maybe that's the issue, though. They're saying you can't... You've got to close the venue by 11 o'clock, so therefore they can't have the bar open, so therefore they lose... Uh, a few quid. Can you? Uh, I can un- listen. I can see both sides of this story, and I'm aware that the music venues are being small music venues that are really important for new acts, and I keep saying this for old acts on the way down as well. Acts that wouldn't. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And heritage is it, acts. Heritage, heritage acts. Well done. Very, very politically put. <laughs> excellent. But, 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 but acts that wouldn't necessarily, you know, fill out a small theatre or the bigger venues. These smaller venues are under threat, aren't they? They are very much under threat. And actually, I have to say, it's not bands on up and bands on down. It's actually that some artists actually much prefer playing the smaller venues because of proximity to audience. And Lord knows a lot of music fans would rather go to smaller venues. I mean, I I personally can't stand going to an arena because you might as well be watching telly. It's not my thing at all. Um, And there are a lot of music lovers that do love the intimacy of a small venue and the shared experience that that gives. So, yes, they are terribly important. They're really important within the ecosystem of the whole live music scene in the UK. And the problem is that for many years, the venues have just got on and done their thing. But in the last couple of years, it's become very obvious, hence the creation of Music Venue Trust, that these venues are basically facing threats on all sides to do with costs, to do with sometimes dropping audiences because... People are less able to go out. They've got less money. Their time is spent differently. Um, Business rates have gone up. There are more restrictions around licensing. You know, a whole sort of collection of factors have made it very, very difficult to run a small independent venue all around the country. And for this reason, something like a noise abatement notice can actually close a venue because if it's demanding that it alters the way that the venue does something or that it's assessed and installs um, some sort of noise mitigation, you know, Mm. soundproofing and what have you, basically the people running the venues don't have the budgets to do that because they're only just breaking even anyway. I can also understand, Beverly, if I lived in an area... And then out of nowhere, you know, that old um, garage or that old shop suddenly gets turned into a music venue and suddenly there's there's music and it's like it, it's really busy at 11.30 at night as people are piling out of it. As, as, as a neighbour, that would pee me off a bit. I agree. And there's a very interesting point here that I don't know about the Bear Club whether the people that have complained are people that have moved in and new to the area and moved in knowing there was a club there or if they're residents that were there before, because it is quite a new club. And this is one of the issues that we're doing a lot of campaigning on. We, we're championing a thing called agent of change, mm. which says that the person that causes the change is responsible for managing the change. Now, the reason that we're saying this is all over the country, 
people are moving near to venues and then complaining about the oh noise yeah that's and that's them shut down. that's tough luck you 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 move, you move into a place you, you go for a walk around all the streets and, and see what's going on and you ask the that that pub that pub two doors down does it get noisy on the front you ask all those questions I, I yeah well, you'd like to think so Ian but yeah. I have to say there are examples that we know of people knowing full well that they're moving to near to a venue and then trying to get it shut down oh anyway. that's outrageous that's outrageous but the, the law is actually on their side at the moment so it's something that we are challenging and actually in the, the Mayor of London's Music Venue Task Force rescue plan that Gosh. Music Venue Trust chaired, we've actually recommended that the Greater London Authority adopt agent of change and they have committed to looking at putting that into the next London plan, which would protect venues in London. So now we've got work on the rest of the country. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> it does break my heart. I, I, you, you're probably too young to remember this venue, the, the old Trout in Windsor. I keep banging on about it because I used to go there a lot when I was like 15, 16, 17. Because A, they let me in because I was tall and I could drink beer and I got to see some brilliant <laughs> bands. I drive past it quite a bit now and it's, um, it's like some poncy restaurant. And I just think, you know, it was, it was th- th- these venues are such um, uh, key outlets for, you know, I, I don't know, free... You mentioned the smaller venue, though. If the venue's too small, Beverly, there's always a chance you're going to lock eyes with the person on stage. I've had that before. You, you make eye contact with the person on stage, and then you're locked in, and then they're singing a song <laughs> straight at you. I don't want that. When I go and see J-Lo at the O2, there's no way she's going to lock eyes with me. Well, it just depends what you're looking for in your experience. I don't want eye contact. It's <laughs> awful. Stand at the back, then. Well, the that, that, that would be the way. Beverly, it's really interesting to talk to you. We'll speak again, I'm sure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good luck with Bye-bye. your campaigns as well. Beverly Whitrick uh, from the Music Venue Trust. Don't want eye contact with a singer. Awkward, isn't it? Yeah, and, and you know, when we did go and see J-Lo, I did go and see J-Lo. Uh, you, you can't, you're at the back of the O2. You are watching it on telly. You're watching mm-hmm. it on the screen, you know. That's, um... On a telly really far away. Yeah, I've just pulled a bit of skin off my thumb and it's bleeding now. Gosh, do you want me to call an ambulance? I want you not to take the pee out of me, mate. It's quite sore. Oh. I'm being very brave about it. So well, I am I Red Cross trained. I don't quite understand elevate, what the Elevate. When, when you get, I tell you what. Next time you're in hospital or something, right? You're ill. I'm going to phone up and go, ah, ha, 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 ah, baby, ex- little baby. Yeah, but that's exactly what you do. Yeah, I know exactly. So, on Twitter, I spent three weeks at Disney Florida. Wow. Three weeks. That we must did, be a nightmare. We did two days at Euro Disney, right? That was enough, was it? That was more than enough. I mean, we found ourselves going on the Buzz Lightyear ride five times, partly because not many people went on it. It was a cracking ride, actually. Um, but two days at Euro Disney. Yeah, done. You know, should we, should we go now, guys? Yeah, finished. That, three weeks at Disney Florida. Are you nuts? Three weeks. Are you absolutely nuts? Oh three four five nine four double five five double five is the uh, telephone number. If you want to give us a call, have we got any texts? Yeah, loads. Go on then. Janet says, "My uh, nine, my ten-year-old grandson." How old is our grandson? Nine or ten? Make your mind up, Jan. He was nine. He's ten. My ten-year-old grandson loves arcades. When I visit him in Portsmouth, we spend hours there. Cost me a fortune. Also, films. What about Bolt? Oh, Bolt the dog. Mm. Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. Wow. That's rubbish. Not having that one. Lee in Milton Keynes. Yep. One point. Lion King and Aladdin are both quality films no, as well. This is not. madness, Ian. Can no, tell him, please. Right. I've not seen The Lion King. I refuse to. Anything... Oh, come on. You've... It is quite good. And I don't like the animal films. You've got to see The Lion King. Yeah, and you've got to see that. No, why aren't you seeing The Lion King? I've watched Aladdin. Have you watched Aladdin recently? Yeah. Rubbish. Ter- it's no... old fashioned, isn't it? No nipples. I know. No nipples. And he's supposed to be Tom Cruise. Is he? Yeah. Which one? Aladdin. Oh, okay. When he's going out that beautiful girl? Wowzers. Did you know that Robin Williams... Um... Yes, made it all up on yeah. the spot. Yeah, okay. I know, that's what he always did. I watched that same documentary that you did. It's what he always did, is he'd go and do a film or a show and they just let him improvise. It's thing. what he did. Okay. Um, but Aladdin is, is rubbish. First of all, here's... Okay, do you know what? Prepare to have your mind blown. The Aladdin story is rubbish. Who gives a stuff about it? He gets tricked into going into the cave and then there's the genie of the lamp. It's rubbish. That, I wanted to know more about the ring, the genie of the ring. Why, because she's always fit and wears a bikini? That's, that's a more interesting story that we never... It, we never... I'm going to write a Rosencrantz and Gilderstern are dead, but based on the genie of the ah, ring. But that not, might not be true, because wasn't Aladdin part of the Arabian Nights? Yeah, So the Alibaba. genie of the ring will keep popping up. Alibaba. Mm, and all that. And this um, open sesame and all of that stuff. It's 40 Thieves. Anyway, Aladdin, is, as, a, as a premise, is overrated. Next. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
It's slow on the M1 northbound between Junction 11 for Dunstable and 12 for Flitwick because of an accident that happened involving three cars earlier. All the lanes are back open, but it's very slow, still causing some queues. And on the M1 into London, it's very busy between Junction 6 for North Watford towards the M25 Junction 21A for St Albans. On the M25 itself, anti-clockwise, there are queues from Junction uh, 22 for St Albans towards Junction 21A for the M1 South, and it's also backing up along the A4052. The A40 into London slow from the M40 at the Denham roundabout towards the Gypsy Corner, and on the trains London Midland have a replacement bus between Watford Junction and St Albans because of a problem with the train earlier. Samantha Bruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy, thank you very much. 8.45, Wednesday the 4th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque at Luton Police Station for Leon Briggs, ahead of a ceremony uh, tonight marking two years since he died in police custody. And a convicted rapist has been detained by police in Blackpool after absconding from the care of a Milton Keynes-based mental health unit. Let's get the weather. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. It is a rather wet start across all three counties. We've got some heavy, showery rain working its way across. One or two places beginning to dry out a little over in Buckinghamshire, perhaps, uh, but most places are hanging on to that rain for the time being. But it is working its way north and eastwards. Now, the Weather Watchers website launched this morning. We've had Ruby do our Weather Watch from Tring report of rain in Tring this morning, and it's around 9 Celsius. And that temperature is going to get a little bit high. It's quite mild today, actually. Later on this afternoon, we're looking at 13 Celsius. Now, later on, these showers are going to die out. They're moving north and eastwards out towards the North Sea eventually, so we'll get some drier spells and some brighter spells as well. Overnight, still cloudy, I'm afraid, with outbreaks of showery rain moving in from the west. Then it dries out a little. We could get a bit of mist developing then. Minimum temperature, 10 Celsius, so it's another reasonably mild night. For tomorrow, bright at first, but then the cloud moves in, and with it, some showery rain. More persistent rain spreading east across uh, the the counties throughout tomorrow afternoon. Maximum temperature 15 Celsius. That's your forecast. So, um, uh, Blink Box, another one of these movie sharing things that we have, right? And uh, uh, the, the, the boys love Scooby Doo, right? Hanna Barbera. Now, there is a classy animation company. Hannah, Joseph Hannah, and William Barbera. I just think it was Hannah and Barbara. I know you did. Of course you did. Of course you did. Well, there's a new, there's a new one I've been aware of. And it's popped up on Blinkbox. And the boys, um, because the eldest can read a bit now, he went, oh, look at Scooby-Doo give us a kiss. What? I went, what's this? He goes, can we watch Scooby-Doo give us a kiss? Oh, I've seen this. It's not Scooby-Doo give us a kiss. It's Scooby-Doo meets kiss. I don't know if my boys are ready to be introduced to these guys. A round of applause, let's go! So there is a chance this week my boys may be introduced to these idiots. This is their live album, Alive. Recorded in the studio, applause dubbed on later, thanks very much indeed. As most live albums are, it turns out. It turns out. You show us Yeah, actually, I think the boys are ready for this. We'll drive you crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you see? Is I this I want to party all night? I, I want to party all night. I'll fucking do it again. You drive us wild, we'll drive you crazy. Well, with our rock and roll music. Here we go. You keep on shouting, you keep on shouting. Come on! Nobody. Wanna rock and roll all night and party every day? An unsustainable lifestyle, as we've uh, we've established already. So yeah, so the boys—they'll come a cropper. The boys want to watch Scooby Doo. Give us a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't let them see Scrappy Doo because that really is poo. Oh, they're going to be so. They, do you know what? They love a bit of Scooby Doo and mm. um, Scooby Doo. Oh, that, that, that's um, gone a bit postmodern, and they keep looking at the camera and doing cheeky winks and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not for the kids anymore. It's not for the kids. Tim and Milton Keynes is piping up with Cool Runnings. Why? Disney. 
It's, it's 35. In defence of Disney. 35 years ago. Yeah, all right, it's a good premise. Jamaican bobsleigh team. John Candy, beautiful, but... Uh, no, no. All right. What about Disney's Mulan, says Linda in Shepherd. Oh, for crying out loud. Girls film, next. It's not actually. Mulan? Of course it flipping is. Oh. What's it about? It's about a girl who has to go to war. She we pretends start... to be a man. Oh, for crying out loud. You girls, learn your place. It's at home building the aeroplanes oh, and the bombs. <laughs> Daily! Hello, boss. How are you? I'll let you go. Go on. Anyway, thanks, you're right. What's Cheers. going on, Philly? Being mugged? All the no, women are no, going no, home. No, but but what, what I would say is, though, you need to think about me and you need to have some respect for me before you well, send me out on the streets. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, buddy. I, I like to think I do have respect. Let's sort this out. And we, well, do you know what? We're yeah, going to yeah. do it on the air. What's, what's okay. your beef, buddy? OK, well, next time you send me out on, on something which you think is funny, like, yeah. oh, Disney haven't made a decent film in the last 40 years, yeah. just think about crazy, obsessed fans who have threatened me this morning with violence. Wowzers. Just think about that, OK? And this, just is, think. and this is the sort of hatred and mm. bile that mm. Disney stirs up in. But in. In all of the Disney films, do you know what wins? Go on. Romance and violence. <laughs> it's those two things. Romance, it's all yeah. sex and violence in Disney yep. films. Every Undertones. film, every film, it's to do, someone beats someone up because they want to have sex. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem with it. Yeah, yeah. Where was True Love's Kiss? Yeah. Oh, is that what it... Yeah, True oh. Love's Kiss is... Gosh. Yeah, exactly. Daily, uh, do you know what? I'm not going to apologise for this. No, you're not? No, I'm not, actually. I'm not. I think, uh, hopefully, you've learned a very valuable lesson today. Well, I'll tell you what, how about you go out on the streets and you say to people's faces mate, mate. that Disney haven't made a good film in the last 40 years to those people who are obsessed by Disney. You try it. Go on, you try mate, it. I, mate, I, I, did, I did my apprenticeship on the streets 15 years ago, yeah. and the day that an old man said... I know who you effing are. You're that effing W off the telly and then swung at me. That was the day I decided to, um, <laughs> to hang up my microphone and to sit in warm, comfortable studios for varying amounts yeah. of pay. So yeah. thank you very much for the invitation, but I'm passing on it. <laughs> <laughs> did it get tense out there then, buddy? It, it did. I mean, yeah. so, some people were, were highly offended that um, you've made these comments this morning about Disney. So... Um, some of them, some of the comments I can't use. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I can't use. But, yep. but I, ha I have been speaking to, to some Disney fans, and they've been nominating uh, the best Disney film of the last 40 years. Uh, here's what happened. Madam, Ian's saying that Disney haven't made a decent film in the last 40 years. Well, they've made quite a good film in the last 100 years or so. Your daughter's got a hand up. Go on, what's your favourite Disney, Disney film? Frozen. Frozen. Would you go along with that? Uh, no, I'd say probably Bambi, but then I'm a bit older than she is. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely haven't had their day. They shouldn't be banned. No, definitely not. Disney is legendary. If they don't exist, childhood won't exist. That's a strong line. Thank you. It's what a load of old balls. Liking. All day. All day. Brilliant. Loved it. When you watch a film like that, emotionally, does it make you tinkle? Yeah. yeah tinkle? You, Especially in that one, because Tinkle. this obviously comes back from the dead, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Young un that. underdog rises up and everything like that. It's, you know, everyone loves them stories, don't they? So. Well, my mum got a standard poodle. She called him Simba. I had a cat called Nala. Well, it was actually called Simba, and then we found out it was a girl. So we called it Nala. <laughs> so, so Ian's saying today they haven't made a decent film in the last 40 years. <laughs> You're going to put Lion King forward, yeah? Yeah, yeah, straight up, yeah. Uh, Definitely. Great bands. Yeah, thanks a lot, mate. Anthony, I'm on the streets today because Ian Lee says that uh, Disney haven't made a decent film for 40 years. How would you like to respond to that? 101 Dalmatians. And that was only about just over 25 years ago, the animation. How far would you go? Obviously, no, you're a Disney fan. Not if, you, if, if somebody was, was taking the Mickey out of Disney, I, I'm not because I'm being very careful here. But if somebody was taking the Mickey out of Disney to your face, do you think it might turn a bit ugly? Yeah, it could do, because it's, uh, it's been a big company that uh, yeah. supports people during their childhood, you know, uh, makes yeah. it easier Goodness for families sakes. to have uh, entertainment. Yeah. So y you take those sort of comments very seriously? Yeah. I would do. Uh, okay, you're uh, clearly a big Disney fan. Have you got a girlfriend? Um, not at the moment. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Just thought I'd ask. Thanks for your time. Right. <laughs> 101 Dalmatians was 1961. Mm -hmm. Right, unless okay. he's talking about the awful uh, live action version with Glenn We might Close. be talking about that, yeah. He, said Close, the, yeah. he did say the animation. He did, yes. He maybe got confused. He, 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 he was a slightly been. confused young Here's man. Here's the thing. Everyone's talking like Disney are doing this for the... Well, di without Disney, there wouldn't be childhoods. Well, then you're, you, that's bad parenting. Disney doesn't make my children's childhood. 
I'm making it. I'm having yeah, a it's, it's, Disney's it's, it's, a tiny percentage of it. I'm having a darn good crack. And everyone's talking about Disney's this big altruistic. Hey guys, we just want to. If Disney was so altruistic, they wouldn't charge fifty quid for a rubbish Mickey Mouse toy. When I it's had just, my kids, I decided I was not going to have Disney in the house. Right? People started buying Winnie the Pooh straight away. I didn't want it. All the clothes. I didn't want them to be having that kind of indoctrination. But it comes. It comes to every single yeah. household, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just a little bit of people's childhoods, just a tiny little bit. And this morning, boss, you're trying to ruin people's childhoods. And that, that makes me sick. Thanks for your input, Justin. It's appreciated. And do you know what? You're absolutely spot on. <laughs> Thanks, boss. <laughs> live album recorded in the studio. Kiss Alive. Most live albums are fake. Most live albums, wow. at the very, very least... They'll take the, the live recordings, then go in the studio and fill in the gaps. Tell you what is a great live, live album that I found in a bargain bin and you discovered recently. Oh, yeah. Carpenter's Live at the Palladium. Oh. That's a belter. That's a belter. All done in the studio. Probably, no. Probably. No. The Beach Boys' 50th anniversary live album. Oh, it, that's not the band that I saw when I went to see them at Wembley Arena. The band I saw was a little bit rusty. They were old men, but they were good. On the album, it's Robo Beach Boys. <laughs> It is. It's like it's computers singing. It's incredible. In crack, I listened to it once, and I, I, I refuse, refuse to listen to it again. Anyway. Any texts for the last couple of minutes of the yeah, show? As we kind yeah, of, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. This is around. an interesting one. Yes, yes boss. Hi, Ian. We're Hi, working on a building site adjacent oh, yeah. to the Bear Club. Oh, it's a club we've been talking about all morning that's um, being issued with notice to button it, button it. The people that live there have complained about the noise from the site, so it can only operate within certain hours. Oh. I think the people there are a little bitter, just my opinion. Well... If you live near somewhere there's loads of noise, I'd be peed off, I'd be hacked off, you know, and it's all well and good saying, well, I think we should keep as many music venues open as we, as we can, because they're important, I do believe that. Having just done a tour of a small venue, slightly bigger than that, I'm, you know, a bit of a draw. Well, a draw in some places, one of the draw in Swindon, 20, th- uh, 35 people came out of a 200-seater. Oh. Did you make eye contact? No, I didn't. One of the best shows of the tour, though, so all you suckers in Swindon, you lose. Um, but, I, you know, I do think small venues are very... I genuinely think small venues are very important, but I don't live next to a small venue, so I haven't got to part with the traffic and the, you know, the drug abuse and the fight. Not say drug abuse at the bed, but you know what I mean? The, no- the noise that these... Of living in a town centre. Yeah. Uh... Don't you get used to it? I don't know. I don't live there. Just saying, you know, get used to noise. Why I used to live some- next to a railway track. At first, it used to wake me up every time a train went by. By the end, I couldn't hear it anymore. Why is someone sent us in a text that says Nirvana MTV Unplugged? Favourite Disney film. Is oh. that live? Oh, that's live. But no, that's that- live. And boy, didn't it show? They were a terrible band live. That's from terrible. Alan in Milton Keynes. Morning, Alan. Oh, let's just have the last minute of this, shall we? Just love you! Oh. That was close. <laughs> We all, we all panicked a bit there. It's Peter Chris struggling to say rock and roll because he's high. The interesting thing is, all those people cheering had not heard the songs that had just been played before. They were recorded live in the studio. It's a good album, though. Kiss Alive. It's well worth digging out. If you spot it in a bargain bit, it's a cracking album. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1 northbound, there were queues because of an accident earlier between Junction 11 for Dunstable and 12 for Flitwick, and that's causing a delay all the way back from Luton Airport. On the M25, there are queues anti-clockwise between Junction 22 for St Albans and 21A for the M1 South. And it's also really busy on the A40 into London. There are long delays from the M40 to the Dunn roundabout towards Acton. On the trains, London Midland have a replacement bus between Watford Junction and St Albans because of a problem with the train earlier. Samantha Bruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Sammy Thank you very much indeed. Don't forget, um, if you go to the BBC iPlayer or the Three Counties website, if you type in Ian Lee and Catherine Boyle, uh, then the Saturday show that we do pops up. Uh, it's on Saturday midday till 2 o'clock. It's the phony show with no topics. 
a late night phone sh- phone in show in the middle of the day. You go to the Three Counties website of the iPlayer, Ian Lee, Catherine Boyle, Catherine with a K. It pops up. It's two hours of um, well, n- nothing, nothing. Hit and miss. Some of it's brilliant, some of it's a load of old rubbish. And that's, um, where else are you going to get such inconsistency these days? Back tomorrow at six. Till then, from us, ta-ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to a rather gloomy Wednesday. It's the JBS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. And on today's big phone-in... Do you wish the government would just ban halal and kosher slaughter? The British Veterinary Association have attacked the government for failing to make Jews and Muslims stun chickens properly before they're slaughtered. They argue a sentence has been deleted from a draft bill on slaughter, which may mean chickens will be conscious when they're put to death. Critics of halal and kosher slaughter argue the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs are afraid to ban religious killing for fear of offending faith communities in this country. Well, I want to hear your thoughts on this today. Do you wish the government would just ban halal and kosher slaughter? Here's the telephone number for your call. I'd love to hear from you on 03459 455 555. This is the JVS Show on BBC Three Counties Radio. I'll take your call in just a second, but first, let's get the latest BBC News. It's nine o'clock. Here's Simon Oxley. The headlines, Manju in court charged with St Albans murder. Police block memorial plaque outside Luton Police Station. And rare Disney film found in Hertfordshire. BBC Three Counties Radio. A man will appear in court this morning charged with murdering 20-year-old Emile Stapleton in St Albans last month. Emile died in hospital after an incident in the city centre in the early hours of Saturday, October the 24th. 26-year-old Paul Crosby from Camden is due at Hatfield Remand Court. Ten other people arrested in connection with the inquiry remain on police bail. Bedfordshire Police has blocked putting up a memorial plaque for Leon Briggs ahead of a ceremony marking two years since he died in police custody. It was due to be unveiled outside Luton Police Station tonight. The fall says it's seeking legal advice on implications a plaque may have for any future proceedings, with six officers currently suspended while an IPCC investigation continues. Liberty Louise is from the Justice for Leon campaign group. This pack had nothing to do with the investigation. It wasn't saying it wasn't trying to say this is going up because the police are at fault or they're guilty. It was completely separate from the investigation. This was something for the family to have to go like they had the memorial site that was dignified. You know, it didn't take up a whole wall. It was a plaque. Junior doctors are being promised an 11% rise in basic pay in new contracts being put forward by the Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, but they will lose some of their extra payments for working and social hours. The British Medical Association plans to ballot its members on industrial action. Harvardshire Police say an officer who admitted arranging to have sex with a 15-year-old runaway has betrayed the honour and values of the force. Lee Brightman, who's 37, faces a jail sentence after admitting the charges at the Old Bailey. More from Carol Abercrombie. The court heard that Brightman from Tennyson Avenue in Hitchin found the girl working as a teenage prostitute and invited her to his home for sex. Instead, she went to the police to report him. The officer also had sex with two women he met during the course of his duties. Hertfordshire police say he now faces a considerable custodial sentence. Two people have been taken to hospital with serious injuries after a crash involving a car and a large piece of road.